jazz hands, Walter. Let's see the jazz hands. Throw up the jazz hands. We're live. Look at Walter doing the jazz hands. He's like, oh my God, he's special now. He's really good at doing this. We're live. We're live. I think this is episode, uh, what is it? Episode 78. 79. 79. 79. Live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. Big Daddy. I'm Hank Strange. I'm oh, Hank Strange. We got Walter Keller in here. You get dressed, Dixie. Kevin. We're live, Kevin. So I'm, I'm, oh, we're live. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. On. I'm you get your clothes on. Get, yeah, clothes get, on. get ready. We're live. <laughs> What's up, people? <laughs> What's going on, people. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, go ahead. Uh, we're, we're getting some people set up. I know we have a bunch of people waiting in the chat. So Kevin, if you guys yeah. want to, you can mute your microphones or what. Do whatever you need to do till you get all set up here, and uh, we'll just entertain the folks. Yeah. Hopefully, everyone has the big girl panties on for tonight. Yeah. You know, I think we're already, we, Mike. Oh, okay. You guys are already. Yeah, you know, um, we are talking tonight. We're talking the Santa shooter. What do you do in the aftermath of a self-defense shooting? Okay, someone's feeding back. We got feedback from someone there. Uh, it's probably Marcus. So, um, yeah, Kevin, I think Marcus probably needs to uh, either put on some headsets or yeah, let me, um, turn I'll his call. volume down. Yeah, so there you go. All right. Um, <laughs> so we're def like what, what we're talking about tonight, our subject is what happens to you in the aftermath of a self-defense shooting. We're going to talk to a gentleman who lived it, unfortunately, and, um, and suffered all the consequences that uh, you, you will suffer in the aftermath of a self-defense shooting. So we're gonna to talk to him and see, you know, how his story went, where he came from, how he's doing now, et cetera. His name is Marcus Allen Weldon. And he has a book, the, uh, t the, the book is in the description. I'll tell you guys what it's called. It's called The Santa Shooter, Guilty Until Proven Innocent. And, and there's a link in the, uh, the, uh, the, Amazon, the Amazon for that book. For that book. So, so. We will, you know, we'll check that out. Okay, it looks like. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, we hear you. Can you hear us? Wait, hold on. I'm going to a better part. I don't have any multiple feedback, but. I think oh, okay. I'm going to go to a better part of the house. Okay. Okay. That works. Yeah, it's better now, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Now, do you have any headsets that you could put in that will help with that feedback that you're hearing there? If you. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Give me one. Let me go grab. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. I'll, I'll just mute Marcus for a second here until he gets all set up. Okay. So yeah, that's what we're talking about. Lots of stuff going on. You know, as you can see, guys. Thanks to everyone who's already joining us, who's in the hangout already. I'm gonna do a roll call in a second. I want to remind everyone: click the thumbs up. Click the thumbs up. Share this video with your family and friends. You know, I know, I know everyone's like waiting for the big round table thing to go down later on tonight. So we are like the pre show. We're the warm up show, I guess, for the because we're not cool enough, Walter and Kevin. We're not cool enough to sit on the round table. So we will call this the square table. <laughs> you know, we're, we are the square table. Square table. <laughs> A table full of square dudes. <laughs> I haven't paid my dues, I guess, you know. What yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't paid your dues. You haven't, you know, you haven't greased the right palms. <laughs> You're not in with the right folks. <laughs> it's not a manufacturer's round table. Listen. Yeah, or you know, or you haven't slobbed the right knobs, you know what I'm saying? Oh dear. Oh no. When no, you, no. you were at Knob Creek the other day, but oh, I, I, I don't think you are talking you about that, that kind of Knob, knob Creek. Man. Come on, man. Did, we, did we end on this note a couple of days ago? <laughs> no. no dear. Uh I hope I hope you have <laughs> Told Marcus just how crazy we get over here. I didn't give him any warning. I like. Oh, oh so, okay. <laughs> so it's good. It's, yeah, it's gonna be on. But I have seen. I've, I was watching some interviews with Marcus. For folks out there who want to know, um, Colin Noir um, has some some interviews with him. I think, or at least two videos. I think it's a two parter. And um, and then he was on another YouTube channel as well as like you guys can just go just go Google Marcus Allen Weldon. And you will see what we're talking about, or Google the Santa. What is it? The Santa shooter. Yeah, the Santa. Can you hear me? Yeah, the shooter. 
Yes. Yeah, okay, I'm, I got my headphones. I'm on now. Right. Okay, welcome, Thank Marcus. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for coming on, man. I know this is probably not like the easiest thing in the world to talk about. <laughs> so yes, it, it's been uh, it's been crazy. You know, matter of fact, my Coleon interview. I was just talking to Cole, uh, Coleon, telling him how how much it, it drains you to talk about uh, the traumatic experience. But one thing I've kind of hung my hat on was uh, my been able to reach and talk to so many different people and help them. So I, I kind of look at it as, as bigger than me, you know? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it is, man. You know, obviously you've got to figure, I, you know, we'll get into the whole thing here in a minute. I mean, right now we're just doing like the opening part of this where we get a little crazy, but I think we will dig deeper down into everything that's going on with Marcus. We're going to be here for at least two hours. You know, let me first do shout outs to everyone in the audience. So let's see who's hanging out with us in the chat already. Actually, Joe Nutson, he was number one in the chat. Joe Nutson, what's up? Shout out to you. Then came the Tyvin Show. Of course, the Tyvin Show was in there. Then Dan Nugent, the Archangel, Tango Hunter, Chris Bullis. Um, I'm going through Joe Carpenter also in the house. What's up, Joe? What's going Joe's on, Rod Mills? If, uh, huh? What's Joe, Joe asking? Was asking if uh, if Kevin's got his uh, cologne on. So uh, Kevin, oh, I actually I, I do. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So oh. there, there's oh. that. Oh, you got, oh. To deal with it. Yeah. Yes. You you you're coordinated, Kevin. Congratulations on that. <laughs> Thanks. Marcus, how well do you know Kevin? You know, uh, Kevin and I, we know each other through social media. I haven't got a chance to meet him in person, but I talked oh. to him on the phone plenty of times. And so I, so do you know about his HK fetish? You, you're a gun guy, right? Let's get that yeah, out. You're, I, you I, are a gun guy. I am a gun, yes. Okay, so do you share Kevin's HK fetish? <laughs> Maybe not. As, I wouldn't call it a fetish for me. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> oh, you, are you an HK guy? Are you an HK guy, Marcus? You, yeah. you like the HKs? Oh. I, I like the HK. HK is cool. It's cool. Uh, I don't know if it's, you know, if I'm as obsessed with it as Kevin, but no, he's sick. He's sick. It's a sick. Hey, I'm not sick. It's a and disease. I'm not gonna tolerate this abuse on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's not one of you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kevin and I, we've we've talked plenty of times, and I'm definitely looking forward to. Actually, I'm actually looking forward to training with him, man. Oh yes, yeah. See, there you're in good hands, but uh, do not take advice of which brand <laughs> to follow from Kevin. My, yeah. my personal opinion, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he might lead you down yeah. wrong roads. <laughs> okay. now, actually, the HK, the HK itself is a gun. I've said this before. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'm not. I'm not hating on the HK. I just it's hate the on the people at like. HK. So there you go. So let me let me go through this real quick. Uh, Rod Mills, what's up, Rod? Uh, let's see who else is in here. Um, there's a bunch of people that just came in. If I'm missing you, just let me know. Peter Hinkle, what's up, Peter Hinkle? Um, Highway Run 77 was going on, and uh, I'm sure I'm like missing a whole bunch of people here. There's like a long, long conversation going on in here. So, folks, uh, DC2 Mega Boost, what's up? Um, Paul Wright just joined us. On the Range is also in here. Lights Out 183, Wardex. What's up, Wardex? I don't think I've seen Wardex in here for a minute, so welcome back. David G says he's here. Um, the Tyvin show wants gun porn first. Uh, yeah, the Tyvin. Like the Tyvin show, it, you know, Tyvin is basically like we should just make him a producer of the show or whatever. Tyvin's always telling me what to do. Thank you, Tyvin. I appreciate that. <laughs> the armed Kentuckian. What's up to the armed Kentuckian? Greg ninety eight K. He says yo. What's up yo? Ninety eight K. What's up yo? I, That's I like I like that name. Yeah. Which one? Which one? Uh, uh, the Kentucky, was it the Kentucky? Yeah, the armed Kentucky. Armed Kentucky. Armed Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. Kentucky. Yeah, there, People have yeah, some yeah. cool names. Do you have I like? Yeah. Do you, guys, do you have? Go ahead. Can you guys see? You can see this. What is this? What is this you're showing us? Walter? That's the uh, the shortened PPSH forty one that I'm working on. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wow. That's, yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a class two manufacturer, so I can build machine guns yeah. and stuff. Legal. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Have you shot any full auto stuff, Marcus? I have, man, I have not. I want to. Oh, you know, dear. Oh, boy, got, we're going to have to I fix got, that. I got, oh, yeah. Dear. Yeah, man, yeah. I, I've, I've been dreaming about getting down and actually doing some stuff, man. I, oh. Ever since my case, like, I, it's been hard for me. They, they, um, 
wouldn't even give me my gun back, man. I've been trying to get my license, my gun back, and everything. Oh, you still haven't got okay. So yeah, that's terrible. We're gonna have yeah. to uh, we're gonna have to talk about that as well. We got a lot of stuff that we're gonna get into with Marcus here. Let me feel okay. So Shaman Bill, Leonard Williams, Vanessa Kitty, all those folks are in the thing. Um, we will. Uh, if I'm missing you, just do a roll, roll call and we'll come back to it. You know what? Let's let's get in here with Marcus. Let's start that. Or do you want to do gun porn first? Which what, what, what do you guys say about this? Tyvin Show says gun porn. A little bit of gun. Porn. Should we show a little bit of gun stuff? No. Should we tease people? I, I, I don't know. Let, let's leave it up to our guests tonight. Let's leave it up. Yeah. To what, what do you think, Marcus? What do you want? You want to see oh, some man. guns? Or, yeah. I want, let's let's see your way guns. into this. Yeah. Let's 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 do it. That. Let's see some guns and ease my way in. Yeah. Ooh, okay. All way. right. There you go. Okay. So we're good. I got the guns we showing, man. Because now I gotta go. I gotta go to the dang on safe. I'm just gonna whip uh, out. Okay. The one anything? Fine. Anything, Kevin? Anything except an HK? There you go. Everything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I have anything. <laughs> Lies. You lie. <laughs> You, you dirty dog. <laughs> All right, let me go grab some. <laughs> yeah, he had the HK sitting right there, but he doesn't have anything else over there. I got like, none. I, I, we're supposed to believe that. No, I don't believe so, it. Okay, so you know what? I think Walter's looking for some stuff. I'll, I'll tease you guys a little bit. So, Marcus. Um, if you want to throw some hate, you can throw it on the I.O. in the oh. ordinance. Oh, so this is uh, – do you have it? Do you have an AK, Marcus? How many – how many guns well, do you, you know have? What? Do you have? I had, you know, I, my, I had, I own an AK, uh, thirty-eight, uh, 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 Smith and Wesson, um, XDM, forty okay. caliber, and um, a lot of my guns I had to sell because of my case, because I needed the money for uh, attorney fees. Right. So like, I'm still like trying to re get back and get everything back on track, because, uh, of course, you know, my guns held value, so yeah, it became a situation where I had to part ways, but. What I'm getting ready to do now, man, is now that I got finally got everything together, I'm about to go back and stockpile up. And, so did uh, you have to sell your AK? Yeah, I had to sell my AK. I had Which to sell one? My what AK, AK did you have? It, it was a um, – uh, was it um, – uh, shoot. Was it like Century Arms? Uh, um, no, it wasn't Century Arms. It was, a, it was a gift given to me by a buddy of mine. Um, a Yugo? Yugo, I believe it was a Yugo. And Pep, I would have to see. I would have to see a picture of him. Like I'm, I'm not a big. I'm still like getting my, you know, getting off into like remembering all the names, different guns. Yeah, no, I that's cool. Really, that's I wasn't right. really as deep off into it as you know, mm -hmm. like knowing every, different, you know, the different names and stuff. But my friend, a good friend of mine, he gave me, he gave it to me as a gift when I was 18, and wow. he told me he was like, you know, it was. He's no longer living, unfortunately, but he, uh, you know, it was a gift he gave to me. And I kind of okay. just kept it, and uh, he, we had to. Sign, I remember when I was eighteen. He was like, "Yeah, well, as soon as you turn eighteen, I got you." And uh, it was my little dog running in the room. Get out of here! Oh, no, that's cool. So uh, let's start here. Let's start here. Let's establish for folks out there that are watching this. Um, obviously, something happened to you. When did this incident take place? When did it go down? Uh, December two thousand fourteen. Uh, uh, the twenty first. Twenty first. Okay. And it happened so at around one thirty. Okay, so the end of basically towards the end of uh, 2014, and still in 2017, three years later, you're still trying to get back. Yeah, you know. I've said it's trying to get back. Yeah, that's okay. I recently I just had, I mean, the case. Okay, the case I was exonerated in 2016. Okay. okay. 2017, uh, about a month ago, I found out that I still was on bond. Okay. Wow. Um. I had to re I had to uh, go back through the whole process and try to figure out what was going on. Um, I kept going down to the clerk. Okay. First off, I just had to go back to the system. Okay. Um, they have not. They have not given me my license back. Um, I haven't even. They haven't gave me my firearm back. I had an XDM forty caliber, and they still have that. Um, like I said, I sold a couple of other of my guns because I needed some money. So it was pretty much like they told me I shouldn't uh, – my under the condition of bond, I wasn't even supposed to be around guns at all. So that's another reason why I kind of got rid of firearms. Oh, I uh, see. I had like this whole – like I was actually – like didn't want to do with a gun in the beginning after, after it all happened. I was like, man, screw this, man. They're they trying to destroy my whole life. I don't want anything to do with a gun. But I had to like kind of get back, you know, get myself back together, collect myself and realize like, hey, this is all part of them trying to break me down. But yeah. uh, I had, 
of course, I had to use my firearm in self-defense. So, you know, after I, that was the first time I ever had to fire uh, a, my gun at somebody. So it, it was, um, if you want me to go into the story, you want me to go deeper yeah. into like, Well, let's, okay. uh, you know what, I'm going to, I'm trying to establish a timeline for everyone that's watching. So or for the folks watching now and for the people, people that are going to be watching in the future. First of all, let me just remind everyone, um, click that thumbs up. Make sure you share, you share this video with your family and friends. Let them know that we're having this conversation. We really appreciate it. So make sure you do that. Let's start from this. Where are you? Or where did this go down? Where did this happen? It happened in Detroit. In Detroit. Okay. So um, I think we said back in 2014, Detroit, right? Winter time. Yep. Uh, when this happened, were you, obviously you were, um, you were armed, right? Correct. Okay. And we and leg legally armed. Yeah, legally armed, right? Le legally armed. Okay, so you had um, a CCW or I don't know what you guys call it there, like a concealed CPL. weapon. CPL. Okay, we call it carry. Yeah, CPL, CCW. Okay, cool. So C um, CCW is more of the charge. Right. Okay, cool. Um, you know what? If what are you using a computer? Using a laptop, yeah. right? If you scroll right. up to the top of the laptop, you know that thing that looks like um, your like your antenna shows you the bandwidth. It will probably help if you, because if you click on that, you could dial it down a little. That will probably, it will degrade your image a little bit, but it will probably help. Because I know you're, you know, you've got like some bandwidth issues. You're freezing up every now and then. So just okay. see if you can just bring that down a little bit. Don't bring it down like all the way, but that will probably help. I don't know if we're freezing coming through to you. Oh, no, you're actually good on this end. Oh, okay, cool. Uh so so when this all um, happened, you had this. How long did you have your uh, concealed license at that time? For six and a half years. Wow. Okay. So six. And, so you were like you were a gun guy. Yeah, I was. A, I was a gun guy as far as self defense and carrying. Um, I wasn't off into the whole Second Amendment movement mm -hmm. as I am now. Mm -hmm. uh, there was like kind of a awakening when I seen that how dirty the government can be mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what kind of like shifted me into this whole direction but I, the yeah. reason why i was the reason why i even carried honestly my i mean i had multiple friends that was killed you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i i lived in detroit my whole life and there was like a lot of a lot of stuff going on a lot of drug related activity and stuff so i mean right. i i got you know best a couple best friends it was uh one, one of them a really good friend that was murdered carjacked so it just became sort of like, well, okay, I need something to protect myself. Mm -hmm. And I, that's why, you know, I came in again, I wasn't necessarily coming in as a gun guy. I was coming in mm -hmm. as I need, I need protection. Right. Then when I got my firearm, then it became like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. You know? Yeah. And uh, my, my, my father was a Marine. So by him being a Marine, you know, he took, you know, he took a liking to it and we used to go to the range and stuff. And, um, I used to shoot BB guns and stuff when I was a kid anyway. So it kind of was like, you know, me bringing, bringing back some old muscle memory of actually, uh, want to go out and target practice. Right. So at the time, I mean, because what I'm trying to establish for people were like, were you in that life in terms of were you like a thug or were you a good guy? Were you just no, no, yeah, yeah. I was trying to work hard and, and, you know, get things done, take care of the family and all that. Yeah, yeah I, I've been I've been working, you know, uh, maintaining employment at the casino for my entire life, well, not life, but 10 years. It feels like my entire life. Uh, How old are you? At 29. 29. Okay. 29. I started when I was like fresh out of high school. I became, I'm a building engineer. Work a lot with the, uh, uh, you know, the high pressure boilers and chillers and things of that nature. So kind of a, okay. a little bit of a little bit of a, you know, a math geek. And then um, I became, and I invested a lot of a lot of time too in, uh, in, in sales and promotion. I was working for a company called Soho. So that mm -hmm. was a company that uh, promoted all kind of different brands. And that was a part-time gig, usually alcohol brands. Remy Martin was one of the sponsors that we pushed. So that's one of the reasons why I was dressed at, in the Santa suit that night. Right, for this party that went down. So just for, right. for folks out there, you know, to reiterate to people, you're just a, you were just a hardworking guy. You had a, a, a permit because, um, you know, other friends that you knew, you knew they lost their lives. You said one of your friends got carjacked. Um, you know, so obviously being in Detroit, it's two sides to the story, right? There's some people that are out there like trying to live that life and trying to take things from people. And then there's good people who just want to go to work and, 
you know, good, honest, hardworking people that just feel like they need to defend themselves. You fall into the category, the latter category, right? Correct. Yeah, that's that's where I fall in. Okay, cool. So just um, like walk us through what happened that night here. I guess we'll we'll do we'll do the gun stuff, but let's just establish for folks out there what happened, and, and you know we'll go in and out of it. So that night, you you guys were it was December. You guys were doing like a Christmas party. What was going on? Yep. Um, sorry, to close the door. Yeah, I I, I had um, we were working uh, as a friend of mine. It was about six of us. We're all friends, coworkers working for this promotional gig and of course it was Christmas time so the product we were promoting was Remy Martin mm -hmm. and uh, they wanted to have us dress in Christmas outfits to fit the theme after the event was over she had a, a flat tire one of the girls I was working with so she had ended up at a gas station trying to get some help uh, to change her tire okay. and she I came up to to help assist she didn't have a jack ended up it was late at night 1 30 in the morning dark uh, Detroit gas station, so it spells, yeah. sp spells disaster. Yeah, sounds I, scary to me. <laughs> I did. So I she did called you. She called you up or something, right? Yeah, she called. She let me know. Well, what happened? She actually was leaving out of the parking lot and was like, "Hey, my tires will almost stop at this gas station up the street." And I was like, "All right, I'll just meet you up there." Okay. And, uh, I thought that really it would just need some air and she can go on about her business, but by by her rolling on the tire for like, huh, that I was think it was about two miles and tore the tire up. Mm -hmm. So of course, when I got there, I was like, oh man, there's no saving this. You got to change the yeah. whole tire. Mm -hmm. But she didn't have a jack. I was like, God. So then I was like, all right, well, I didn't have my jack either. I had my personal one for my car, but I didn't have one. For, she had a truck, so it wouldn't work for hers. Mm -hmm. And um, Turned out, I ended up, uh, She it was two guys that pulled up. They were intoxicated and they started harassing her. They thought she was by herself. Mm -hmm. Um, both of them were Arabic descent. They were talking in different languages and stuff. And so when I approached, I asked, I said, you know, I was like, Hey, you know, what's going on? One of the guys, he charged at me. We got into a little physical confrontation. Uh, his friend was actually still in the car. His friend was like, uh, I guess he stayed in the car from what it looked like for me walking up. It seemed like he stayed in the car and his, but and his buddy got out and was approaching Erica was her name. And I guess he thought that she was alone. I don't know if he was trying to talk to her or, right. you know. Yeah, I think I saw she was in, I think I saw some footage where she was in a news conference. So just to paint a picture, this was like an attractive young woman in a, in some kind of Santa outfit, right? Right, right. Yeah. And he yeah. just seen her and I think he was kind of like, you know, who is she? So when he walked up, the first thing he did is that I think he said something to her. I don't know if she heard him, but he got aggressive. Mm-hmm. He maybe maybe he didn't take a, a rejection well or something. I don't know, but um, he ended up pushing her. And when he pushed her, that's when I was like, "Whoa, what, what, what just, what's going on?" You know, I was like, and she started yelling at him. They're going back and forth, and I was like, "All right." I walked in. I, I walked up and was like, "Hey, you know what's going on?" And he ran at me and pushed me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, and I could tell he was drunk. I was like, "Man, this guy's this guy's out of his mind." Um, what I didn't know was at the time how many people he was with. I knew he was with at least one guy because I could see somebody in the car, but it was dark. I couldn't tell how many. Right. So the first thing, I, my, my instincts kick in. The first thing I'm thinking is, all right, this could turn into a possible situation where I either get jumped or, you know, I, I got to pay attention. I don't know who's he, you know, I'm by myself because I'm not counting her, mm -hmm. but I'm just kind of counting myself. And I'm like, okay, so I'm watching. So we, he grabs me. I push him off me. You know, I, I, you know, we get, pass a couple blows and then next thing I know his uh, his boy I'm looking at his you know looking at the car and like his boy is trying to get out the car or he's looking for something I wasn't sure what he was doing and they said something back and forth to each other in another language and it's like everything's going fast you know it's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so I'm like okay I'm, I'm trying to figure out okay what's going on and so I didn't know what he said uh, it was something in Arabic and then I said, um, you know I, then that's when I, he I seen his you know, I know if he was digging around in the car but grinning grab a weapon or a, a gun or a crowbar or whatever he was about to grab but i said hey i am armed i tried to warn him like back up so he looked down and he, i had my hand i kind of like bladed my firearm and kind of had my hand and kind of pushed my left hand out like this trying to you know say hey back up mm -hmm. he runs back to his car and i'm thinking okay he's getting ready to get in the car and leave hopefully but he ended up grabbing the firearm out of his car which i guess that's the original weapon his boy was looking for when they were talking back and forth <laughs> And he turned, he turned around and when he spun around, 
you know, he, it's like, he kind of like, it was almost like he kind of like, it was like a quick, as soon as he grabbed, it was instantaneous. He spun around. You could see his hand go like this. Mm-hmm. And when his hand went up, I mean, I blanked out. I mean, honestly, I blanked. I, I was, at that moment, I thought I was dead. So I was like, I just remember pulling my firearm and I just started squeezing. <laughs> I mean, I was, I, I was, you know, aiming directly at him. And the moment he spun around, I fired my first two shots. I waited for a second. Like I was, cause I couldn't even, even understand like what was going on. I was trying to process it. And then he fires a shot. I hear like another shot go off. Like I was, and it was, you know, her return fire. Then I just freaked out again and, and I looked straight ahead and fired two more shots. So I'm thinking that I hit him. He didn't even fall. Like when I, when I first shot, you know, I was like, I didn't know if I hit him. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, man, am I hitting this guy? Did I get hit? The girl screaming, did she get hit? Did mm-hmm. you know, like where did his shot go? I'm like looking at my body. I'm back. And I mean, it, it was just crazy. And this is so, all like outside of the gas station. Outside of the gas station. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm, you know, I'm just like freaking out. So I'm, I run to the alley. This, this is an alley on the right hand side. So she, the girl runs off, I run to the alley and I'm trying to call now. I want to pull my phone out. I said, are you hit? She said, no. I said, I'm not hit. So I was going to go back, but I was kind of like skeptical. Like, should I go back? I mean, I don't know if this guy is alive still. I mean, you know, do I want to engage in another part of the shootout? You know, mm-hmm. so let me call 911. I, I really wanted to get to safety. That was my main concern. So I'm calling 911 and no one answers. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the lady answers, but in the process of her, in the, you know, the operator answering, I hung up on her because I hear like these tires screeching. So I'm thinking like, okay, go back into defense mode. Okay. So as I'm going back into defense mode, turns out there's a black car coming right at me. I mean, you can, it was a, it sounded like a hit me because you can, you know, boom, that's all you hear. And, I, and mm-hmm. I'm already out of it. You know, I'm already uh, adrenaline pumping. So I'm thinking like, this is the guy that I just got into a conversation with coming back at, at me to run me over. Right. So I just grabbed her and we just took off and ran down the uh, alley. So as we running down the alley, this car's following us, man. And I'm like, man, they're going to, you know, I'm thinking like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to shoot again. Like this is, they're, they're not there. I, I don't know who, I just see yeah, a black what was, car. What was the firearm that you had? I had a, a, the XDM. That's what Oh, I the was XDM. Getting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the spring mm-hmm. Yep. So I had about, you know, XDM carries 16 in the magazine and then there's one in the chamber. So 17 right. altogether for the 40 yeah. car. I'm sure at so, that point you were happy for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, how I, many I, shots had you already shot? Four. Four. Okay. So yeah, so I was I was good. I think I I only had sixteen in it at the time though. Yeah, I only had sixteen. I didn't have one. I had a I didn't put the extra one in. Mm-hmm. And uh, but whatever the case was, it turned out the crazy thing about it, I'm running from this car, and it wasn't the two males that I had the altercation with. It was off duty police officer mm-hmm. who happened to be close by the scene. Right. So he heard the gunshots. He heard the gunshots and he had seen me running. And he immediately started following yeah. me. Yeah. Right. OK. So, so he was doing his job, but you didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So I see a police officer up ahead and I keep in mind we're running and she's still screaming. I, you know, I'm <laughs> every time I think about it. the gun's in your hand? The gun's and, out? It's in your hand? Yeah. It, yeah. It's in my hand because I thought I was getting ready to have some more some more beef. And I'm like. All right, so what's next? So I'm running. I'm like, okay, Marcus, think maybe I I see a police officer ahead, like the blue and white mark car. And uh, I said, maybe I'm gonna run to this officer here and try to get help. When I ran to the officer, man, it was lucky he didn't kill me because he'd already got radio what was going on. They all pulled their guns out on me, and I was mm-hmm. end up surrounded by like three, four officers with guns pulled on. Me. Right, and you had yours also drawn. Well, I actually put it up by the time I got to okay. him. I was, I was right. smart enough to know not to not to run and, and, and have a gun out in front of a police officer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even though I was traumatized. Did you ever have any kind of training for this kind of a situation? Man, I Is went to the range crazy? maybe just going to the range once a, once or twice a month. So like, you just like, trained on on shooting. You just did. Yeah, okay. I just did target practice. Like I, I like I said, I wasn't even. I wasn't into the culture like I am now, like and trying and understanding. I was just like, hey, go to the range, you know, buy yeah. 50, 50 rounds, you know, target practice. Yeah, I mean, I was yeah. good. I, I was pretty good at target practice. I mean, it was, you know, I, I, but as far mm-hmm. as me having like a, a live setting where you're actually getting 
training if someone attacks you know mm -hmm. like scenarios so you had like none scenarios. of that okay so you so you the you and the cops now come together what happens so they got their guns on me so the first thing i'm thinking like honestly i'm gonna tell you the first thing i thought in my mind you're both in like, a Santa, you're both in a santa suit though right yeah, yeah yeah so yeah both of you she so both of you guys are in a are you in a full santa suit i mean you've got yeah. the hat on do you no, have a not beard the hat. not the hat oh not, not the, the hat. hat okay just the suit <laughs> okay you don't have like a white beard or any of that stuff no, i took i took that off already you i took that to off that. okay makes sense it makes sense <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know it's a crazy story right man. yeah but, so um, okay so you you run up on the cops they run up on you what happened? And then uh, the girl, she ended up running. She took another direction. She We parted ways at this point. I think she ran into a bar, actually. That's exactly what she did. She ran into a bar. I ran to the officer. Mm -hmm. They pulled their guns on me. And the first thing I thought was, man, this is about to be like one of those Mike Brown, Trayvon Martin deals mm -hmm. where like I'm laying on the ground dead and they about to have me in a front newspaper and mm -hmm. I'm just laid out and they're going to be like gunned down by cops. That was the first thing I was thinking. Mm -hmm. And your and life I, is flashing before your very yeah, eyes right now. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, I'm thinking like I'm about to be one of them black black guys dead by a police officer. I just that's the first thing I thought. Mm -hmm. And I'm laying there, and then they're like walking around me, and I'm like sweating and and, and like inhaling dirt because I'm laying, you know, I'm laying on the ground. They got the hand, they handcuff me, and the, mm -hmm. I'm just every time I breathe, I'm breathing deep. So I'm dirt, dirt's flying in my mouth and eyes, mm -hmm. and I'm like choking, and I'm like. Oh right. man, and I'm, I'm thirsty. Did, was was anyone like real physical with you, or they were, you know? No, you know what? I was surprised, man. The the officer, uh, actually, the officer who actually had to to arrest me. Me and him are friends now, too. By the way. Okay, that's <laughs> but, good. But uh, yeah, he was uh, he was real cool, man. Like, at first, he was kind of like looking at me, like, man, you know, I don't know. But then when he talked yeah. to me, he could see I was scared. He right. was like, right. he was like, this is this is not a guy who's just shot some people. Well, you weren't you weren't putting up a fight either. So yeah. that, that that no, I wasn't putting up a fight either, right? Also, I like I, I always tell people, if you talk, you know, when you get into a situation with police officers, most of the time, I don't think it's all the time, but you know, they're human beings. You're a human being. If you guys start talking, they're gonna, you know, maybe initially when he saw you, he had one thought in his mind, right? Could have been like a gangbanger or anything. But the minute he starts talking to you, just like we are now. You know that that's changes in his mind, right? His picture of you changes, and he goes, "Oh, this is just a you know, this is just a kid, yeah, out there yeah. working, you know, whatever it is, right?" The, the story right. starts to change. So tell us yeah. what happened. So I get put in the back of the cop car, and I asked mm -hmm. him. I was like, "Man, I remember I kept asking for water. I I, I was extremely dehydrated, mm -hmm. uh, and I kept saying, I was like, please, man, I need a, I need need some water.'" And he was like, "Well, I don't have any water." And I was like, "All right." So I tried to like just drink my spit. I was just remember trying to get. Like I was just trying to like you know. Were you like you got you went to the party? Were you drinking? No, no, I didn't. We can't okay. drink when we work, so we're not allowed okay. to do that. So that was like a company policy. Yeah, it was a company policy. So, right. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, the only thing so I you, drank that night was Red Bull. Okay. <laughs> oh, so that that probably didn't help with your adrenaline. <laughs> no, nah, that didn't help. But it might have saved you. Might have saved you though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. So you, so you, so the, like with this adrenaline rush and everything that happened to you, your system like just probably taxed every single resource that it had. Yeah, it taxed every single resource, and 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 you could feel it. You know, you I'm, you're, you're shaking, like you're trembling, mm -hmm. like this. You're sweating, and uh, but when I started talking to the officer, he said I could tell that he, I was starting to win him over. Uh, he and he asked me a question. He said, uh, um. He said, "Did did you?" Uh, he said, "You better hope you didn't kill anyone, because you know this could this could be a murder case." And I was like, "Well, if you would go back and check the scene, I'm sure you'll find that it's self defense." And then he looked at me, and then before I can say anything else, he was like, "Well, just you should just contact an attorney." And I was like, oh, "Yeah." Right. So, so when he said right. that, I, I knew that he was like kind of looking out for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was trying to give you the signal that at this point, don't keep talk too much. Shut. Yeah, yeah, keep your mouth shut. So I, I just mm -hmm. I just got quiet. I got. It took me down to the uh, the holding cell. I had to stay there for seventy two hours, and then I was mm -hmm. transferred to the actual main jail, Wayne County, Wayne County Jail, okay. and I stayed there for not even a day, and then I got bailed out. But did they did process, they tell you the status of the other person? What uh, you know? What happened there? Not at that time. They didn't. Okay, tell you me. didn't know. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know none of that mm -hmm. at all. All okay. I knew was I, I thought I hit him, but I wasn't sure. I mean, okay, you know. It, it, I, I couldn't remember if he fell, and you know, keep in mind too. At this moment, my my 
I don't know if you ever had like a, something happen to you, then like uh, maybe two, three days later, st stuff started coming back to you and like you're remembering. Yeah. Yeah. So it was more so like at that moment, I couldn't recall everything, but it started to slowly come yeah. back. And that's the reason, listen, it's not, you know, I'll tell you right now, police officers, if they get into a situation, they're not going to do a lot of talking. But this is not a bad thing. It's, this, it, you know, like some people think like, oh, that makes you a criminal if you're not doing a lot of talking. You, you don't know what happened. <laughs> you just reacted and your mind goes into a state where it, it's like fight or flight right now. Yeah, you know, right. and it's it's like if you if your if your brain tells you you've got to survive this, it pushes everything else out of the way. So yeah, yeah, and right. And, so go ahead. And so when I was sitting in the jail cell, like I kind of like overheard officers laughing. I was all on the news. You could look. I could see that you know they had TVs in their office. So I'm like, dude, this is all on the news. So you're famous. I'm yeah. Unfortunately. Okay. Uh, New York Times, actually. It made the New York wow. Times. Okay. Do you have clippings of all this? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. All right. So you made the New York Times. Why? Was it because of the Santa suit? Because of the suit. Okay. Because now, what was the status of the guy that you were shooting at? He was shot twice, once in the stomach, once in the leg. Uh, he was, he, he was uh, in critical condition. Okay. Uh, they were saying that he might not make it, and then the other guy—it was—it was two of them. The other guy got hit, in the, got clipped in the arm. Okay. So it could have been a situation where the bullet, because I think the bullet went straight through uh, the the first guy, and it could have clipped him in the arm, or he could have got hit. Because I did fire four. But he was—they were directly be, he was directly behind him, like literally. Right. You know, if you look at the, and even when I looked at the video, he was. He was in the passenger seat coming out and another guy was sitting in the driver's seat. So it's like direct, directly behind him. So. Okay. Really, his shot wasn't necessarily for him. It was actually for his, his, his the guy who was the aggressor. But mm -hmm. um, when he gets, when I, I we I ended up asking the, uh, my attorney, when he got to the, the jail, I was like, uh, yeah, they, we got to get this videotape. There was no videotape at the time to be found. Mm -hmm. They said it didn't work. I kept getting on this hoopla, like, hey, the videotape. From, this is from the gas station. Yeah, from the gas right. station. Who owned okay. the gas station? Uh, pretty sure it was Arabic. Okay, that's uh, my. that was my oh. question. Yeah. So was this like a big name brand gas station? Or? Yes, yeah, Speedway. This is a huge, huge name. Okay, Speedway, okay. And, it, and then we found out that the two guys, they own gas stations or their family. Oh, I imagine that. Yeah, so we started to kind of like. Okay, so they could have been a relationship between these guys and the people who own the right. gas station, or even the guy that was okay. Was yeah. were there attendants in the gas station? Yeah, oh, it gets better. Yeah, okay. it wasn't intended. This this is where it gets real crazy. Mm -hmm. So the so the attendant, he was there, and he seen he seen it all, you know, and he said it on nine. He called nine one one. Okay. You can hear, I don't know if you heard if you've seen it. The, the video on nine one tape is on YouTube. I don't know if you've seen. Okay, it. no, I haven't seen but, that. So what? Okay. So what was said on when he when the attendant called nine one one? What did he say? He said, uh, "Hey, there was a there was a fight." Uh, he said, "There was a girl. There was a fight. Two guys were fighting. One guy had a gun. The other guy got his gun and started shooting at him. And he was then the then the uh, the the." Um, the 911 operator said, give me the description of the guys with the guns. He was like, one guy had a Santa suit. The other guy was an Arabic male. Uh, and then when they got to the scene, they asked him to write a statement, you know, mm -hmm. or this is going to be his, good. His statement was, <laughs> his statement was, you know, the guy in a Santa suit fired first. three to four shots first. And then the other, or he just said, he just said three to four shots at, the Eric male and Eric male shot two shots towards me. Mm -hmm. But here's the part, here's the killer part. He disappeared after he made the statement. He couldn't be found. The gas station mm -hmm. attendant. The gas station attendant. And he That's was a, also of Middle Eastern descent, is what you're saying. He he I didn't even I never seen him. I never, oh, I never, never saw guy, okay. Never, so you have no seen. idea. Okay. I think from his name, the only thing I got is his name. This name and it fit the bill. It 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 it's it not American, honestly. It was like oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. But I don't, he was just, yeah, don't necessarily just, put his name out there, but yeah, I know I'm not, I'm not going to put his name out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so it conveniently, it conveniently disappeared. Yeah. Conveniently so after all this happened, this guy fell off the face of the planet. Yeah. He also made it. He was on, he was on channel seven, but they cut his whole body off. Like they, they changed his voice up in there and they cut his body off. 
You know, like you know, to say, keep oh, his... like he was like behind the shadow. With yeah, the voice yeah. Change and... Wow. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was he was he was talking about a whole shootout, and then he just disappeared. And we had like this. I had like a, a, a private detective looking for him, and then he ended up finding his family, his mom, and they said he didn't want nothing to do with it. Okay. He was back. So this guy was never found. Never. Well, he never came him. forward. Okay. After this whole thing. Right. All right. So you're in, you're in prison. So now did the uh, so the two guys you shot at they both survived? They both survived. And they, okay. one of them left. The, he left the country though. The the main guy. He never. He left. He as soon as he got well, he left the country. He left the so country. He wasn't. He wasn't a citizen anyways. Then. Yeah. He went. He went to Yemen. He never even. He just. Ah, okay. Never. He just vanished. So do you know whether? So I don't know if um if, like was he here legally, not legally, or. You know, uh, no. I, I, his he, he had a, his alias his name his alias name didn't show up, but I don't know what his real name is. Okay, so when this all happened and he went to the hospital, he gave an alias. Yeah, he, his alias name. That's what the news is writing with his alias name, but he never. Oh. I don't okay. know his real name. Okay. So we tried to look him up and had detectives try to see, but it was all nothing. Okay. nothing. I couldn't what, find was nothing. His, so did they ever find his gun? Oh, and so they never found his gun, nor did they search the scene, but they had they on the video the guy's his buddy's going to the dumpster. So <laughs> he runs to the dumpster. So in, in trial we asked the uh, we asked the uh, uh pro well we asked the guy on stand because his, his the driver showed up, he did show up to court, the driver did, the one that got hit in the arm. So we asked him on stand and we said, uh, well, what was you doing by the dumpster? He said, Oh, I was hiding. And um be, the, in the preliminary he never stated he went to the dumpster. He said okay. he stood by the car. He never he never left the car. Mm -hmm. So of course, when we got the video, we said, "Well, you said you never you know you never left by the car. You're in a, you're at the dumpster." Oh, I, oh yeah, I was I was hiding. And then we said, well, "What did you pick up off the ground?" Because he picked something up off the ground. Okay, in the video. Said, in the video, and he just he did he didn't he didn't uh, he said he didn't pick anything up, but obviously he picked some up. And even the prosecutor announced he picked some up. But she said, "Well, you can't tell. The video quality is not great. We don't know what he picked up." Okay. okay. Why? Why, so, she, why? Why she siding with him? Yeah. So yeah, let's. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. So let's. Uh. So. Um. So they never. So they never found the gun from those guys, right? Right. So we. So yeah. no one knows whether that gun was legal, or illegal. We're gonna assume that it wasn't. Was the guy that showed up a citizen? He was a citizen. Yeah. So and he tried to say he didn't even know. Oh no! Uh, he didn't his know. partner. He, I didn't know him like that. He's. That's what he said. He's like, I don't. I mean, we're. We're. I know him. We're all right. We're cool. But I don't know him like that. Oh, so I'm okay. thinking that he, I think he was, maybe he was legal and his partner wasn't. I don't, okay. you know, I don't know. So let's, I'm just trying to keep this in a timeline. So you're actually locked up. You're in jail. Okay. You're in the precinct. You're not like in a, like a main. You no, know, just in jail. Just in jail. Yeah. Yeah. So, and while you're in jail, you said that you heard the police officers laughing. Um, so they were laughing because this made national news. Yes. And it was, I mean. And it had to do with the Santa suit. The Santa Claus. <laughs> okay. You're right. Yeah. Right, the Santa Claus suit, and then um, it was all like I said. Now he told me that he was like, "Man, you're famous. You just made the New York Times." And I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" So what and was what like? What details were they telling you other than that? I'm just curious. The the, the only other details they would say was, "Man, you better have a good attorney, man. You know, you you look like you're facing a lot of time." They was you know they pretty much doubting my story, doubting me, mm -hmm. and I didn't really give them detail because I didn't want to have anything used against me. Right. Okay. And uh, so I was just kind of quiet. Then they then they ended up handcuffing me and a bunch of other guys by the feet and transferring us to another facility. Mm -hmm. And and by the feet and arms like a chain gang. Yeah. So probably like a central booking kind of situation. Right. Then they mm -hmm. then they take the whole process. You know, em you know, stripping you down and emptying your pockets and stuff. So, mm -hmm. but I ended up getting bailed. I ended up, my, I was able to my mom post bond and got me out of there and. Uh, we went to the preliminary exam. I had a video, like a, what they call it, a not necessarily a preliminary, but it's like a video uh, preliminary, you know, on oh, where you're a video sitting, conference. Video conference with your with the judge on the other end, right? And okay. they post, they give you a bond. They gave me a bond of fifty grand. Okay. Uh, to, it was, but I was able to get a ten percent, which so they say fifty grand, ten percent, which is five. Grand. Yeah. Did you have a lawyer at this point, or? Yeah, I did okay. have a lawyer. Uh, so, so my lo a lawyer was was a very good attorney. He uh, got my got me a uh, got me a bond and was able to negotiate it. So when I got out, they tried to throw mm -hmm. me back in, but I got a we was able to compromise and get 
uh, tether, uh, house arrest on the tether monitor. Okay. Why'd they want to put you back in? Yeah, they so they me, were, I'm, they, go ahead. They wanted to throw me back in because they felt that one, the other guy was going to die in, in the hospital bed because they said he was on his last leg. This is before he left the Yemen. And, <laughs> and, and <laughs> he wasn't that, he wasn't that, he bad. Was, yeah, he wasn't yeah. that bad. Yeah. 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 And, and two, uh, by being a high profile case, this is a type of case that prosecutors and judges want to make stands and statements on. Yeah, exactly. You had, you had, so, you had, you had no priors though, right? No, I was clean. I was, yeah. like I said, I was working at a casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, just for folks who are joining us now, this is our guest is Marcus Allen uh, Weldon. Um, I know you don't have a lower third up there. So folks who are watching are asking us, um, I don't know if you know how to do the lower third, but if you do, I don't know if you have the hangout toolbox. Uh, if you move on the screen and you see that little green suit, uh, it's like a green circle with a white suitcase. That's the hangout oh, toolbox. Yeah, so if you open that up, you'll see that you can put in your name and um, and then up to, yeah, above it where it says lower third, you can click that to turn it on, but put in your name and then put the uh, name of your book or something like that so folks will know when they watch this video in the future. And then you can choose a color of it and you can turn okay. that on. So yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a toolbar handout. I mean, uh, hangout toolbox. Yes. Yeah. So you click on that, open it, and then uh, you'll see something that says uh, lower third display name. You put your display name in there, and then one then another line says tagline, and then after that's color. So in tagline, you could put like the name of the book or something, and because uh, you do have a book, there is a link to your book. It's uh, it's on Amazon, and uh, the book is called The Santa Shooter: Guilty Until Proven Innocent. And that's from Marcus Allen Weldon. So you guys can find that in the uh, in the description of this video. I'll also put it here in the chat for anyone who's interested in checking that out. I'll put it in there. Um, I think Marcus would appreciate you guys' support. As you guys listen to this story, you'll see that this became a very, very expensive situation for him. And he's still trying to get back. So he's published a book and, you know, um, in my in my words, we'll, we'll get it from Marcus, but in my words, this is probably a way that you guys can help him out. So, and then once you put all that stuff in, Marcus, um, above, up, up top, where it says lower third, across the top, you'll see like a circle, it's like a radio button. If you click that, you'll turn, you'll be able to turn it, oh, turn it on, and then we'll actually see that lower third pop up. Okay. All right, let's yeah. see this. So, right, if you, I see, I see tagline, uh, tagline, color, choose color, custom overlay. Yeah. 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 Well, don't worry about custom overlay. Just fill it in. Just fill in the display name, tagline, color, and then go up to the top part of that where it says lower third. And across from that, you'll see like a little button and you click on the right of it and that'll turn it on. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. This is the first time I use this. Yeah. So no, that's cool. We understand, you know. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a rookie. Yeah. No, that's that's totally cool, man. So, um, so the, the situation here is that this became national news because you were wearing a Santa suit and it hit the New York Times and everything. So right now, all the prosecutors and everyone starts posing, right? Yeah, everybody because, starts posing. They start yeah, fronting on you. Like, they're they're in, like, in the oh. limelight. And you become the victim of that because they didn't look at this case and immediately say, like, I don't know, does Detroit have stand your ground? They do. They do. They do. They do. Oh, okay. So there should be law that should have defended you in this situation, right? They should have just been able to look at the evidence and go, oh, this is no big deal. This guy was, you know, defending his life and, and, and this young woman. Well, let me ask a question. Speaking of the young woman, what, how did, how did she play in this whole thing? She Cause came she, to, she was, she, cause she was the reason you were there. You know? Yeah. She, she came to trial and, um, she, she, she took the stand and, and did an outstanding job and really helped nail that nail in the coffin. Um, I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy. I took the stand as well and I didn't make a previous statement before, but yeah. the prosecutor could not, she couldn't do anything with us. Like when we, we both, we just told the story, told the truth. But when the other guy went up there, he lied about drinking or oh, both of them were intoxicated. Um, he also did lied. They, to, did they, did they find the alcohol when they did? when they went to the hospital? Yes, okay. yes, yes, they did. So it's like, um, like also, the, so the, the uh, prosecutor, um, do you, I don't know if you remember who she was, what her name was. I do. You okay, to, do yes, what's her name? Let, let's get that out yeah. there. <laughs> Absolutely, she's in the uh, public eye, we could talk about her. <laughs> yeah, Cam Towns. 
Okay. Yeah, Cam Cam Towns. Cam Towns. Okay. And why did she decide to pursue this case? Like, well, she, she, did she not see all this evidence? You know, obviously, you now had to defend yourself and get a lawyer, and you guys had to hire private investigators and try and get the tape and get statements. Um, she saw none of this stuff. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. The did, video – I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did the um, fact that those two gentlemen were of Muslim slash Arab – and you were black, did that play a part in this whole thing or – if there was a there was a, a Muslim like you were like you were the bad guy. Yeah, there was a Muslim backlash. It was a uh, the, the the entire courtroom was filled with Muslim uh, people in the, in the Arabic community. It was it was you know they they had their own news station that was covering oh, the whole okay. event. Was that Al Jazeera <laughs> or a completely different thing other than Al Jazeera? I'm not even sure, man. This I'm is sure. like oh, they had their own local state because for oh, people who don't yeah. know this, Detroit has a a very big population of Muslims, yeah. right? Yeah. And Dearborn, yeah. correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 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 so, remember. Okay, you go back. You remember I told you about the statements mm -hmm. that was made, and and it's so much. You know, I, I hate I hate to give away like uh, key parts of the book, but like one of the things that I had to do was I had to figure out how to get the evidence that the uh, clerk stated that it was two guns into the to the court. Uh, to the to the trial because he wasn't available to testify, so they yeah. they had it like it was hearsay. So they said we couldn't use it. You see so we so you had to figure this out, or your lawyer? I did. Like you, you know, what I mean, like oh, it was, okay. Because like, you said you like, had a good lawyer, right? How? I did have a good. I'm gonna tell you, man. Attorneys yeah. are only as good as you. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they they uh, only. Unfortunately, as, I, mean, I know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I and mean, people say you can have a good lawyer all day, but that that doesn't mean. Yeah that you need to just sit back and say, oh, he's got it. He went to school. Yeah. Well, lawyers are handling a bunch of different cases and, you know, yeah. they're never going to feel the pain. His ass is not sitting in a jail cell or threatened with being going to prison for the rest of his life. So, exactly. you know, the impetus has to be there. And folks are asking this, so I'm just going to cut in here and ask you, how much did this legal defense wind up costing you? Do you have an estimate of what it cost you? You, you didn't have like a, you didn't have mm -hmm. any kind of insurance for this, right? Right. Yeah, I did. And I ended up spending like I actually was adding up everything. I had missed work. I, I include missing work because I couldn't go to work for like, oh, uh, like close to seven eight months. But it was into like forty three thousand. Wow. Okay. So, so I, I between I had to pay for the tether. You have to pay while you're on tether. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about I had a private investigator, uh, uh, ten grand to get started. Uh, each investigator I had was at least two grand. I had a video expert, private investigator. Um, a self-defense expert, Rick Ector from Detroit, if you all know him. Yes, we do know him. He's a good guy. Yes. Yeah. He, 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 like, he was on my case. He was on my case. He oh, reviewed cool. everything. Right. And he was able to come up with a trans. He wrote his own transcript stating that it was self-defense. He gave his expert opinion after right. he's seen all the evidence. Okay. And uh, so once I got his expert opinion, I knew I was like, okay, man, if Rick's saying this, mm -hmm. did I lose you? No, uh, no, we're here. We're here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. My you. screen, my screen went, my screen went black. I don't know. Oh. What's, <laughs> Maybe it went into. It's a gov. It's a gov. <laughs> yeah. What's what's going on here? It I mean, went into screensaver, but we can still hear you if you can hear us. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm just hoping that the battery's not about to die. Okay. But, Do you have? Uh, the, can you plug it in? Yeah, I, I got a. God, I just charged yeah. it. I don't know. It should, yeah, uh, give, you, give me give me ten yeah, if seconds. You need, if you need to get it, go ahead and get it. We'll we'll do some uh, housekeeping stuff here while you're doing that. This is a very uh, interesting story. I want to thank everyone who's hanging out with us and listening to this story. Okay, we lost we lost him for a second. He's probably going to have to sign back in. Um, don't forget to click the thumbs up, guys. Don't forget to share this. Uh, Kevin, um, I know you're sitting back here so you can get his story out. Carry insurance. What do you think about all this while we're waiting here? Um, well. I tell people like this, man. First of all, self-defense is anything but common sense. Don't think it's going to be easy. Um, and when it comes to the options for insurance out there, which is basically, if you guys are familiar with like what prepaid legal is, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, look into it, man. Look into it and get it. I don't uh, push one or the other, uh, but I would say, you know, get you get you some some time. Hop on Google. You know, look at the look at the boys. You know, you got Carry Guard. You got U.S. Shield Law. Uh, USCCA has one, you know, look at them and see which one better fits your financial standings and which one you like better as a consumer, but definitely get one. I know the plan started like, like eight, eight bucks a month, 
you know, and gives you, and of course, with anything, as you pay, the levels go up. Uh, but you listen to him talking about spending, you know, close to fifty thousand dollars and a frustration and a headache. Um, it's not easy. Um, a lot of people want to have these cowboy images of what a gunfight is, and it's not it's not anything you think it is. So the 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 better protection you can have for somebody that takes X amount of stress off of you, whether it be financial stress, uh, legal stress. You know, whatever it is, the the more help you can have, the better. So yeah, it's going to come from all ways. As he's saying, it was like six, seven, eight months that he couldn't work. And if you're going to carry around a, you know, anywhere, you know, let's let's say you spend five hundred bucks on a handgun, you can afford eight dollars a month on some in some protection. I just yeah. think. It's Do you have a preference of any of these? I know you don't necessarily, you know, but I know that you're you're into this stuff. So do you have a preference? Yeah, I you know I like I like a I like a couple of them. I mean, U.S. Shield law is not bad. Uh, USCCA I think has the the kind of a reputation for always being there for their people. I'm not saying other ones Mm -hmm. don't. Uh, No, carry guard is new. So when things are new, there's always tons of room for improvement. Mm -hmm. So you know that's how I will look at it. You know who's who's had the better. Who's had the most reporting of the services having to be used? Mm-hmm. Uh, and right now, I believe uh, that's USCCA. Um, I know US Shield laws had a couple. I know they just got in um, in um, better standings with a lot of people because years ago uh, there were some some rumors about them not having a financial backing to back one of their clients, and mm-hmm. everybody kind of stepped away from them. But apparently, they got new leadership, and that is all resolved and changed now. Uh, so that that kind of be my hierarchy. But get out there and look into them. Yeah, it might be a, you know, it's, you know, I, I have a sheet. Matter, of, I wish I would have uh, brought it, but it's at my office. It actually compares uh, U.S. Shield Law, uh, USCCA, and Carry Guard all together in a Excel format. I'll try to remember okay. to bring. It. Okay, yeah, I think Lola's telling me. Let me check the description because Lola's telling me something about the um, about the link that I'm posting in there. So she says she posted. Oh, she posted one here. Okay, hold on. I, I'll put this one. So everyone, ignore the other one I was putting in the ch- in the chat. There's the one Lola wants you to go to. I just posted it, Lola. Okay. okay thanks. All right. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. All right. So I just posted that in the uh, yeah, chat. Straight, yeah. Straight. yeah. Oh, hold on. I don't think it would let me. Oh, it's not letting me post that here. No. Mm-mm. no. Okay. So yeah, that one that Lola's trying to give me, it won't let me post. It's in the description. There's a link in the description and you guys can go there and check it out. However you get to it, um, I'm sure if you look up um, Marcus Allen Weldon and uh, the Santa Shooter, I'm looking at it, is the title is The Santa Shooter Guilty Until Proven Innocent. So there you go. You guys can look that up. All right. I think, uh, Marcus, you're back. Okay, I don't know if you can hear us yet. So make sure you guys are clicking thumbs up. Make sure you're sharing this, okay? We appreciate it. Um, I know there's other stuff going on out there, so I wanna thank everyone who's hanging out with us and part of this conversation. Please uh, post up your questions and stuff like that here. We'll uh, try to get to those um, you know, as soon as we can. Lola's saying that the link that I just posted before is good. I don't know why YouTube's blocking that particular thing. Who knows? So Marcus, are you back? Okay, I don't think I'm gonna dial him up real quick. Yeah, Um, yeah, I'm not. Let me see if he's. uh, Yeah, I'm not. I'm not muting him. So hold on one second. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. um, If you can finish your thoughts there. Oh, go ahead. On the carry insurance. Um, Mm -hmm. You back? Oh, there his screen is. Can you hear us, Marcus? I don't know if he can hear us. Um, I'm not sure what's up with his phone. Okay, you know what, Kevin? You go deal with that. Walter, what do you think? Do you have carry insurance? Okay, now you're, are you muted, Walter? There I you was go. eating. I was doing, I was taking your advice while I Yeah, ate okay, some thank you. Thank eating, you. I appreciate that. Eating some crawfish etouffee, as a matter of fact. Yeah, um, okay. That my lovely wife made. Um, I don't have it, but I might do it after talking about, hearing about this. Um, I have heard that the NRA thing is not the best one, so... Um, that's just what I heard. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we're not trying to knock anyone in this thing. I'll be honest with you. I don't have it. But just listening to this conversation. I'm like, okay, I need to and stop messing around. I mean, around. It's, it's cheap insurance, you know, mm-hmm. you might never, you might never need it, but if you don't, if you do need it, even though, if you, even if you do have the way to pay for it, it why, why should you, you mm-hmm. know, if you can have insurance, let somebody else pay for it or let somebody else help. Um, yeah, you know, 
Right. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like it's kind of like a scholarship for your kids in school. Even though yeah. you have the money to pay for it, and they get a scholarship then. Right. Rock on. Also, things it, you can get hit with a perfect storm, man. Don't believe, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm listening to this and I'm thinking like all the wheels are moving around in my head. I'm like, yeah, yeah this is a thing. Like Kevin said, you know, you can buy a gun. Oh, well, one know. second, one second, you're minding your own business. And next second, you know, somebody's doing like, like that. They stop and they start harassing you. And then next thing you know, rock yeah, and roll. Go, so yeah, things even, go the wrong even, way. You know, it could have been just a simple altercation, you know, and, and, and you well, that wouldn't work with the gun thing, but still, I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. shit happens before you know it a lot of times. Well, yeah. a lot of, a lot of times, you know, it's, it's people believe that when it comes to this, it's going to be, you know, cause you're, you're a good nature person, right? So most people carry yeah. guns with good nature people. You assume that if I get into something where I have to discharge my firearm, it's going to be cut and dry. There will be no question. Automatically, I'm going to be good. Automatically, right? yeah. you know, cause I'm not going to put myself in a situation that has any variables, you know, it's going to be cut and dry. Let me go home and everything's good. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's not. Hence the reason for no other choice. That's one of the reasons why my, my company is titled that. You better be at no other option. You have tried to run, talk your way out of it, plead your way out of it. Use your, your you know, your physical distance. Back out if you have to. Just and get away from everything because, you know, this whole, I'm telling you, man, it's this imagery of shooting someone, even when you believe it's cut and dry. I don't care if it's a guy rumbling through your house in the middle of the night. Right. It's not what you think. Yeah. I can't import to people enough, man. It's not yeah. what you think. Yeah. Get get Okay, help. I think Marcus still can't hear us. Um so we gotta come up yeah. with Yeah, we gotta come up. I, I'm not sure why his audio I know he's not muted on my end and I saw him take it on and off. I don't know if he's got if it's something with his computer. Okay. He might out. yeah. Um, he he also he's got a headset there. He might have to plug that back in. Yeah. Ask him if he plugged back in the headset. Yeah, you know, so, man, th these are not situations that you really want to get into. No. You know, we all would prefer to, like, enjoy guns, have fun shooting them and owning them and checking out the engineering and the design of the guns yeah. and never have to do that. But, of course, like, as Kevin is saying, if you have no other choice, you have no other choice. If someone's right, coming right. onto your property. Or a know, whole from, gang of people are trying to jump you. Then yeah. It's, then it's rock and roll. Sorry. Get home to your get home to your family. That's uh, yeah. what is the really, really, really important right, thing right, here. Right. So I don't know if uh, folks have any questions in there. You know what? Um, let's do this. Let's you want see some gun porn. Yeah, let's do some gun porn, Walter. What you got? What do you got there? Well, let's see what you got. Uh, other than the food, we got food porn already from you. So let's get some gun porn. What is this? This is a Russian yeah, 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 yeah. SKS. Oh, okay. So nice wood. Yeah, oh, Got yeah, the bayonet yeah. built in. Is that oh, the bayonet? It, it, right oh yeah, yeah. It gets good wood, you know. Yeah. Oh, the fold out bayonet. Oh yeah. Blade bayonet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, the Russian the Russian rifle's really nice. Laminated wood. Just a really high quality setup. So for you for people that like, you know, SKSs, which I do. Yeah. Because I have well, I try to have one from each country, mm -hmm. um, but I, and I have a pretty good gathering of them. Okay. So um, they're fun to shoot. We haven't done much with those, but they're fun to shoot. Yeah, uh, I don't think I've ever seen that one before. That's really oh, nice. I haven't it's seen that the, one. Nope. Yeah, it's got the nice bayonet and everything yeah, on laminated, it. Laminated yeah. stocks and yeah, yeah that's a, pretty. That's sexy. Nice dark wood. <laughs> yeah, it's got good wood, you know. <laughs> yeah. And this is a um, 19, um, 1954 model, so a mm -hmm. couple days old. But anyways, that's what I pulled up for the gun porn right now. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else? Anybody else have anything? Um, um, I could show some stuff if you want here. I will okay. do some things while those guys are working that out. Um, Check this out, Walter. Obviously, uh, here. Oh, I'm gonna start oh from this here. was this was the one you were teasing me with, right? Yeah, I'm gonna start from here just so you guys can see. Oh, this I like a nice butt. I like a nice yeah. butt. You yeah, know? I like big butts. So oh, there, you like nice butt. there you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. Wait, wait, wait. Go to the back. It's got a switch. The, look what's on the back of that clock, baby. That, that motherfucker got a switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, so when we get, is, we get we get to shoot that. This is all the way up. Nine nine mic mic. Is it nine millimeter? Um, yeah, I don't, think this this is a nine millimeter. Um, this is a seventeen C. Okay. You know, uh, 
Glock 17C or G17. Right, right, C. right. So yeah, we could shoot this one of these days, man. This is a Big Daddy Guns right here. I got a 50 so, round drum mag, man. Yeah, so you know, I can always uh, pull this out of the safe. Mm. You know, we'll mm. make sure we shoot this one of these days. What, what, one, what? Of, one of the days when we, when Kevin's not coming. What, you know? what, man! <laughs> <laughs> when Kevin's not coming to hang out with us. Oh, oh man. man, what did I do? No, Kevin, <laughs> when you come to hang out with us, we'll, we'll pull it out. So there you go. Got the excellent, app. excellent. All right. And, uh, He's shutting his computer down and logging back on. Yeah, okay. That's good. We'll wait for him. And, you know, since uh, we're in the, the mode of 9mm, ah. check this out. Angstead Arms. See that? Angstead Arms. But let me show you the switch here. It goes there. Oh, it goes there. Holy moly, bless him, my It goes all the way back to fun mode, yo. <laughs> Is that a post sample? That is a post sample. Um, yeah, you know, so this is this is another one we could shoot. You know, block magazine. Ooh, man, Use I need to look at that inside, Hank. By the way. Oh, oh, you do. You want me to what? You want me to open it? Well, up? when I, when I see it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I we'll need to take that. a look so, at the in innards of that thing. Yeah. So, and you know, for all the folks out there, I know not everyone is in the Gainesville area, but for folks who are in the Gainesville area, or you can be in the Gainesville area, you know, we can make some special arrangements <laughs> to shoot this. If you really, if you're really, really nice to me. I think Lola should make that a section on that's Patreon. That's a Patreon. That's a Patreon yeah. thing. Lola should make that a Patreon section. And then um, this this is a big, massive gun. I got a big, massive bad boy here. Look at this thing. Which one is that? <laughs> oh. This is like totally, totally new. So here, I'm going to have to What's pull the name this on it there. What's the barrel length of it? Uh, yeah, I'm going to. Uh, it's a, the, the barrel length is massive. <laughs> it's a Ritter and Stark. There you go. Ritter and Stark. Oh, I never heard of that. It's the X because it's brand new. It's the SX1 MTR rifle, which That's means the modular tactical rifle. This is like a 308. So, you know, it's uh, magazine fed. It uses uh, P Mag 10s. Uses that those bad boys. That's good. That's good. And uh, magazine fed bolt action configurable. And then, and then you can change this to other calibers and all that badness. That's I don't know a lot about it because it just came into the store. And oh, I went that's in kind there. of like the, the Desert Tech uh, SRS. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That's so, um, the trend right you know, now is these rifles like that, that same pattern. Uh, yeah, what were you saying, Kevin? Yeah, it's kind of like the Desert Tech. Uh, what's, what's the retail on that one? Um, the retail on this is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of like six grand. Hold okay. your panties tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope. Yeah, I hope you got your um your expensive panties on. You got your gold plated panties. But on that's probably because you know some of these like I think uh for example um Desert Tech has the HTI, which is their real big boy one. That's probably more than this, but you know. Yeah, I mean I think yeah. there's starts at like thirty nine ninety five. So yeah, that's I mean it's right in that ballpark. Yeah, yeah. It's not, so it's not overpriced. Yeah, yeah. That's you know for all the uh, precision engineering and all that. So. This one, this one is also available in the store. Big Daddy Guns, shout out to those guys. Look at that. Yeah, um, Look at that. Like Richard, Richard Hughes is asking about affordable AR-10 mags. Uh, Magpuls, yeah. good, good, fairly priced on AR-10 mags. I mean, Magpul. Yeah, Magpul. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one comes with a P mag, and then it comes with this big, massive case. See the Ritter and Stark case that's behind me. Well, this is a big ass case. Okay. <laughs> this case is really, really huge. <laughs> That's a back. Big ass yeah. case. Yeah. Big ass case right, right there. Bro. Yeah. Please, no one ask me how many balls the case can hold. Oh. Let's not let's not get into well, that. that that's not fair because again. if you take the foam out, it's not a true representation of how many uh balls it can hold. So yeah, well, we could, we we have to check to see how many balls it could hold with the the foam. The foam has to be in there. Um, Tango Hunter was asking me if I've shot my uh my Palmetto State Armory AR-10 yet, mm -hmm. and the answer is no, I have not. You still haven't shot it? Okay. Are you um stopping by my place this weekend? Well, I might stop at my dad's place this weekend. Oh, you're gonna be up at your dad's place? Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, whatever. That's well, okay. I mean, you haven't been out to daddy's in a while, so. Yeah, I got to go check. Okay, it looks like um, looks like Marcus is still signing in and out. I don't know why he's got audio issues. I just, it's the thing when his computer died, it screwed something up. Oh, okay. Does he have, like, a phone or something like he that? Just, um, you just tell him calling from his phone? 
Um, well, yeah, if he's got, if yeah, he should be able to just go through his phone if his phone is charged. I'll do probably come in on the phone and um, try that, and we'll get him I'll back. Put the on. camera on the phone. Yeah. Uh, Dan Nugent says yes. We want Hank's balls back on the podcast. That do you know? Someone has to pack those things up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going there. <laughs> yeah, someone has to. When the balls come out, then the balls have to go back in. So, Hank, your sack's not big enough, huh? Is that what you're saying? No. no, the sack is pretty big, but, you know, someone's got to put the balls back in the sack. That's not our job, Hank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like everybody's everybody's happy, wants the balls to come out, and then I'm the one who's got to put the balls back in. you got to pack them up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, get so, um, tell him, Kevin, to uh, come in on the on his phone if he can do that. So all he has to have is like the Google app and everything. All right. So do we want to hit some new stuff? Let's go through some news and see what's going news. on. I haven't even looked at it today. Actually. Yeah. Let's see what's up in the news. What's um, up? Let's see here. So I know there's the whole story going back and forward with Trump and then the, you know, one of the guys that died in Niger. We were talking about that the other day. What, so what's like, going on? I haven't heard about a whole that. Controversy. In what respect? Like, uh, apparently, like one of the families is saying that Trump was rude to them when he called or said some craziness. Oh, by the way, you know that the uh, security guard in Las Vegas, he showed up. Yeah, on the Ellen show? Yeah, so that's, that's why Come he disappeared. On. Yeah, because he was taking bids. That's why he disappeared. Yeah, he disappeared yep. to build up the, um, you know. So he's going to get interrogated really good on the Ellen show. So. Yeah, right. Sure. Archie Feely and Macon. Oh, you, oh, you poor thing. Oh. You're just like us. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they are. There you are. Can you hear us now? Let's see. The phone works much better. I don't understand. Oh, there you, what go. Just happened. <laughs> there you go. Pardon. You're back. Yeah. Sorry, well, that's, no, man, that's cool. That's how the technology goes down, you know? Yeah, it happens. Yeah, we understand. It's that not a thing. Like some, uh, that was Illuminati. Yeah. Illuminati. Yeah. That was the Illuminati. You heard about the Illuminati? Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're having a meeting tonight. They were like, nope, this guy, nope. Nope. Hit nope. the button. <laughs> Hit the <laughs> Hit that yeah, button. On you. No, it happens. It happens to all yeah. of us. Yep. So Yeah. So where were we in the I think uh let me all right, let me backtrack. Uh oh. I think we were talking the about case. how much it cost, right, for you to defend yourself yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So I was about at forty-three, forty-three thousand dollars day to day, like I literally because I spent a thousand just taking care of, and not to mention I had to reapply three times and got. So I don't know. I add that in it too because when it comes down to it, it's, uh, I get my uh, gun back. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Everything um, count, you know. If you can, you can go. You can go. I don't know if you can degrade the uh, picture image or just go to audio only or something like that. That will probably help because I know I know you're probably having some signal problems there in the house. So, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because I can I can hear you guys good. Let me see if I okay, good. I'm gonna go back to right. yeah. That's yeah, because your audio's coming was coming in a little. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. All right, all right. So um, yeah. So you're talking about forty three, uh, three thousand e easily up to fifty grand. Because <clears throat> I since two thousand fourteen since it actually happened and all the attorney fees, ex expert witnesses, the bond, um, I spent. Uh, couple hundred a month on tether and I was on tether for 13 months so you have to pay for your own um, for that, monitoring yeah for your own ankle yeah. monitoring oh, that's cool. yeah you got to pay for your own anchor monitoring and if you break it it's a uh, 1200 or I'm sorry 1600 dollars to replace wow okay so, How and then my and my and it kept getting postponed every time you get your court date postponed man people don't realize like a lot of times attorneys unless you got like attorney who just takes the money up front and say okay this is a set fee but when you're post when you get postponed like that they can they ask for extra money in a minute like oh well 
you know, they postponed it for next, tw and, and I think my case got postponed three times. And each time I got postponed, it was it was becoming more and more apparent that he was going to be asking for some more money. Mm. <laughs> okay. So the speedy yeah. trial stuff, man. That's, <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even, you know. So eventually you won your case? Yeah, I won my case back in 2016, the day after Father's Day, actually, and, uh, which was significant because I do have a daughter. Okay. And oh, I'm sorry. No, that was yeah, that was the day after Father's Day. Yep, yep, yep. Because Father's Day was a Sunday, and I came back and got the verdict on Monday. Okay. And um, seven felonies. It was seven felonies altogether. Wow. Okay. So, so what's their excuse uh, for not giving your gun back? Well, they keep telling me uh, the first, the first thing uh, they told me to come pick it up, and they gave me a, a, a list of days I can come pick it up. I went down there. A, 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 I like to. You have to wait okay, we're well, breaking up, so we didn't hear that last part. Charge! I he I couldn't catch up with him. He he. Every time I would come uh, down to his office, he was never there. It was almost like he was dodging me. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and then when I went down and, and um, I had my attorney try to track him down, he answered my attorney phone twice. And then after that, my attorney couldn't track him down. So it just became a cat and mouse type thing, chasing them around. So this gun has probably disappeared. They probably just don't have it. Yeah, I think. So. And then on top of that, they wouldn't give my license back. I kept getting my uh, CPL revolt every time I try to apply again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's that, that's because I was still on the uh, on con conditions of bond. Mm -hmm. I just recently got that cleared uh, about three weeks ago. Okay, so you've gotten your your uh, carry permit back? I got to apply. Oh, so, then, so I had to take the class over, but I took the class in 2016 again to get my certificate. That certificate is expired. So I got to go to Rick Hector on Saturday and get a new certificate, but I had to do the class over again Wow. to get the certificate because that's it's supposed to be near. Okay. And um, so this one not, was, was it's expired to class over again. Once I take the class over again, I can go back and apply and pay for the CPL. Yeah. So, uh, but but Rick's Rick's helped me out. He told me he's gonna give me, he gives me a real good deal on it. He's not gonna charge me the full price of the class. Okay, cool. Were you gonna ask a question, Walter? No, I'm just thinking about the damn gun thing. Yeah. 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 Walter. Oh, yeah. I, you know what, that. <sighs> Do you have some kind of GoFundMe I mean, or anything like that going on for folks out there who want to help you out or? Yeah, yeah, I got a fundraiser account. Um, it's uh, I will have to send you the link actually, because it's it's um, okay. It's not a GoFundMe, but it's it's called it's called GoFund. It's uh, I mean, it's called fundraiser, and mm -hmm. it, they they spell it F U F U N D R A Z O R. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just like a GoFundMe, same thing, but um, mm -hmm. so I do have that account still. Okay. Familiar, but are you familiar with he's the, one of the second minute advocates but he's been helping me push my who, who was that again that. what was the name larry uh larry pratt of uh oh i've heard of larry pratt yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 uh big guy uh i think he's i think he's a libertarian i believe he, he but he really was you know a good advocate and helped me out so uh, so it was cj cj uh open carry texas i don't know if you guys know open carry texas Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, oh, CJ, yeah. Yeah. CJ stepped yeah, in and helped yeah. you out, man. Yeah, CJ stepped in and helped me out, man. He, he, you know, a lot of didn't want to had no part uh, on the liberal side. Didn't want to have no part to help mm -hmm. you know, at all. Oh no, of course not. So on fundraiser that you're talking about, what are you under? Like Marcus Weldon? I'm trying to look yeah, it up Mar for you. Yeah, yeah, Marcus Weldon. Okay. Let me see if I could find it here. Um, okay. Is it a picture with you and your daughter? Yes. Okay. All right. So let me um, put this also. I'm going to put this in the chat for anyone who is interested in this. Hold on a second here. Yeah, I think somebody should sue their ass to get your gun back. Well, actually, that's where, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Or if they don't bring it back, sue them, really sue them. I mean, just for, 
Yeah, from, no, from, I mean, okay, yeah, YouTube is blocking me from from posting that there. I'll put it in the description for anyone who wants to see it. I'll put that right under the link to your book in the description. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah and I, I got a, I got an ebook too. A lot of people, if people, because it's nine bucks uh, for on Kindle and Amazon. Uh, on Amazon. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, so. I'm actually in the loss. I'm actually involved in a lawsuit with the uh, for my gun back because there's a um, there's a lot of people that can tell me big law of the names that the my attorneys represent a bunch of us who oh they, it, it's a back. it's a typical thing for them not to return to firearm oh yeah oh here in Detroit yeah yeah uh, exactly. yeah who knows what happened to that gun in Detroit man it probably got sold to some gangbanger <laughs> yeah, yeah anything I would doubt it anything yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Detroit yeah. is still the so wild, what, wild west, man. Yeah, Detroit yeah, used to like be. I a, said, my, my, no, I like said like that's so why. Like any in my book, actually, my book is more than just a case. It, it talks about my best friend being murdered. It talks about you know being growing up in an urban lifestyle where you're pretty much looking for um, a way out. You know what I mean? And it's it's like all kind of normalized violence constantly happening around you. It kind of molds you. And yeah. you gotta like stay, stay out of the way. Don't fall to your succumb to your circumstances and stuff. So, I mix it all together because it, it is relevant to the actual case. Because character is something that generates you. And if it wasn't for my good character, I probably wouldn't be talking to you today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a clean record, you know. Even if I had a CPO, you know, a lot of people don't realize when you go in front of a jury, all those stereotypes that come along with Detroit and black males that 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 follows you. And it's like if you come in there looking like a, a game banger, then they're gonna be like, "Oh, here, here we go again." So you pretty right. much are gonna get booked. Yeah. Yeah. But if you come in there and you uh, present yourself in a way, or and I'm not not just you, I'm talking about your just coming to court with you, everyone. Yeah, your your entourage so, or your yeah. people or yeah. yeah, yeah, they're looking yeah, yeah, at yeah. everything. Um, so Kevin, did you have some questions here? Oh yeah, definitely. So okay. Um, Marcus and I, I know we, we had a, we had a talk. So let me um, let me throw a few things at you. One, what can you what advice would you give to people? Since you've been through this horrific ordeal, right? You've you've unfortunately had to discharge your firearm and somebody in self defense. You've had to deal with all the backlash. But since you have been in a situation that is a minority of people uh, that legally carry and have had to use their gun, um, what what would what advice would you give them if they could, like if you're if you can say hey. If you can avoid doing it, do it because it also comes with this as far as like the mental distress or the trauma afterwards and things of that nature outside of the finances. What would you tell them? Okay. One carrying a firearm, get with a grassroots gun organization. You need to have good that so you can be educated on the, the, the laws. You can, you know, know what you can and can't do. You want to have a bunch of people around you like yourself that can educate you throughout the uh, and constant keep you, uh, and new training and just up, up to date on laws because one thing that I learned the hard way was okay I think we look he froze yeah we didn't hear the last part of that Marcus nope yeah okay no, but I learned the hard way can you hear me yeah Yep. Okay. I see it's kind of freezing up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're good now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What I what I say what I found out the hard the hard way was that people try to uh, research people try to research um, after it and learn everything, but being surrounded by a group group of guys like yourself and everything is one of the main things needs to be well-rounded in the gun community. Uh, different programs out there like USCCA or Legal Firearms Protection, Carry Guard, whatever one you prefer, I would definitely say get one of those. And uh, keep it on the moment you use your firearm, you want to make sure that the prosecutor has anything to do on because you're going to be pumped full of adrenaline in this thing. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, and so, as far as another another thing to add, I'm sorry. I mean, I forgot to add this part to um, mm -hmm. anguish. Learn a lot of a um, lot of things that I do now. It's gonna sound crazy, but I think people need to do like some kind of yoga or some type of 
<laughs> oh, to kill. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay, we're still having troubles with the uh, with the feed. Damn, a little nice. Yeah, yeah, you know something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're still losing you a little bit. I mean, I think you're like I know it's probably tough inside the house. Let's see if you're back. You there? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Okay, cool. Go ahead. I'm trying to figure out it. Okay, because it, it was. I was like, yeah, I. You need to have some um, hand to hand combat training, mm -hmm. as well as some type of yoga or something that can keep your brain at ease. Because when you uh, if you have in your repertoire, when you do get in a situation like this. You know how to like de-escalate a situation or when to use a firearm, multiple defense, multiple people coming at you, you know, can you use physical force and, and, and try to like stay away from the firearm? I mean, that would be some advice. I think we should do firearm training as well as martial arts, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. I think that's, I think what you said is, uh, is very valid. Um, and for those that, you know, don't know part of, uh, one of my other instructors here at no other choice is, um, a, a, a third degree, uh, Taekwondo instructor. Cause what he's saying is true. You know, like I say, any, the gun should always be the last resort, you know, um, not saying you should be out there trying to do fancy disarming techniques. If a guy's got a knife, no, yeah, you, you know, don't, you know, don't, no, <laughs> hey, don't get it confused, but, uh, don't, yeah. don't get it confused. Yeah. Um, but I would, um, I would say this. You're right. Everything you said is correct. So um, I think between, you know, the financial uh, hits you had to take being a legal carrier to have to defend yourself, all the emotional and financial trauma you had to go through, coupled with, you know, fighting for your gun back and uh, trying to get the, the concealed carry um, permit reinstated. Um, you know, like I told you over the phone and I, I'll tell you again, um, when it comes to accelerating your training and, you know, being you know, geared back up and getting back into the fight, you know, any class you want on me for life is free. Doesn't matter what you want to do. Um, get your butt here and we'll, we'll get you trained up because I think it's important that people continue to hear your story. If you're still there, uh, I think it's important that people continue to hear the story and understand that, um, man, this goes well beyond showing off cool toys and thinking you're Billy bad. But when you walk out the house, this stuff is, is serious, you know, it's deep. And a lot of people don't take it serious until, something happens and then they're like, oh my God, you know, oh my God. Um, I, I do think that if we if we start focusing in more on the true things that happened after the shooting, which I think the community pulled around you so strong and so fast, I think it, it shows a different side of it. You know, it's why we constantly fight for rights, why you need to make sure you got the right political forces in house, right? Because law and politics are one and the same. And, you know, if you got politicians that don't want you defending yourself, they'll enact their lawyers to make sure that you suffer for it. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, it's, it's a full circle. Yeah. Did, did, uh, um, since you had this altercation with fellas from that other, um, religious thing, did you have people threatening you from them? Did you have any oh, yeah. funny phone calls and stuff oh, like yeah. that? Not, not phone calls, but Facebook messages and comments and stuff. Okay. So, I mean, right now, what's your situation when it comes to fear? Are you still worried of, you know, reprisals or like this guy, this guy is not in the country, but if you use a fake name, he could always come back into the country. And then what <laughs> yeah. about the dude that is in the country? We can take him to Germany. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, you, you, you're about that, but I mean, When I was fear my whole life, I'm never in Detroit my whole life. I mean, it's like it's part of it. Mm -hmm. I am so hating your phone right now. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe this, man. Like, okay, let me see one thing. Let me go back in the room I was in. Like, go was, outside uh, or something. <laughs> I'm up a telephone. No, we don't want. Yeah, we don't necessarily want him to go outside. Oh, you know what? I'm a little I, bit of danger. Unless it's safe. It's well, if, if it's safe out there, by all means, go outside. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's safe out there. The only thing about it is it's dark. I don't know. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> That's see. why you need this. You need a light. <laughs> you know, I'm up. All right. I'm back. I'm outside, man. I'm outside. Okay, there you go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm outside. But no, what I was saying was, uh, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Like, I'm not about to run and hide because no. what happened. I mean, like, I mean, I. I didn't grow. I didn't grow. I, I didn't grow up in the street life, but I mean, I did grow up in the sh- like in the street. So it's not like, like I grew up in Detroit. So it's not like you know I've I've already experienced a lot of uh, traumatic experience. I don't really. I'm kind of numb to a lot of stuff now, but mm-hmm. I try to. That I don't put myself in situations either. I'm not the type of guy that's gonna go, be hanging out the club and stuff, and then come out and and then boom, you're waiting for me outside. Right now, my my, my main goal is to get my message out, to rebuild my life, and make sure my daughter's good. Um, yeah. I re- I, like I said, I've already lost two friends already. I'm not, I'm not trying to be the third one in the crew that's to get taken out. So. Right. So is there anything, I know Kevin probably has some other questions. Um, I think he muted, he's muted. Yeah, right? no, Did I, you have other questions, Kevin? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so for a moment, you know, and don't like give up any, like don't get yourself in any legal, I call Kevin, okay. uh, any legal trouble or anything like that. But if you can slow it down for us for a second, the moment, that you, I know you said you blacked out when you first had to engage him with the first two shots. He returned fire, you engaged again. What was your mind literally doing? Because a lot, and I'm asking you this because a lot of people have this cowboy mentality like this thing is going to be super cool. All my shots are going to go right on target. It's going to be clear cut. End of right. story. Uh, they I, People really don't understand the adrenaline, they don't understand tunnel vision. Fair factor, decrease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't understand all that. So, walk us into that aspect of it. Tell us about and, that. Uh, everybody's seen the Matrix, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it was almost like a a Matrix scene. Uh, it was a slow mo. I, I I was looking at actually I was I, when I fired the first two shots I looked at my firearm and was watching the shells you know eject from the side. Literally, mm-hmm. I seen the shells flying out. It was almost like I seen them in slow motion. How was the sound out. for you? Was it was it loud or you? It wasn't even ears? loud. It, no, yeah, it that's, wasn't loud that, at all. That, that's what I tell people. Like I haven't never had a situation like that shooting at someone, but it's like when you go hunting, when when all of yeah. a sudden you got to do it, you don't even hear the stuff. Yeah, I didn't hear any. I mean, like it, it sounded like firecrackers, man. Compared to the range, I mean, it wasn't loud at all. And this is a forty caliber, so I mean, it's 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 you know, but it wasn't. My ears and nothing didn't ring. Oh, okay, so this was a forty. Yeah, this is the XDM forty. XDM yeah. forty. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is a and and um, another thing too. Like I said, I mean, I mentioned de- being dehydrated, but um, it was almost like the light that was in the gas station was amplified. You know what I mean? Like it was ten times yeah. brighter than it was yeah, before. Senses were mm-hmm. increased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um. That's the man. That's another thing I remember. If, I, I remember I described it too in my book. I was talking about it for like God had opened up the heavens and was like reaching down to grab me or something because everything just was, got real bright. And mm. it was uh, and this is this is midnight. I mean, this is, you know, a little after midnight. So this is dark outside. But of course, you got the lights that was in the uh, gas station, but it looked like daytime. Wow. Okay. Do you think they would have thought any different of you if you would have stayed at the scene? Um, it, you know, it could have. Versus you're running pop, away, pop. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, that was all a misunderstanding. I mean, I tell yeah. it because I, you know, I got attacked a lot. A lot of people say, "Why did you run? Why did you run?" A lot of people tend to have not just tunnel vision but tunnel hearing. I, because <laughs> people when I when I tell people the story, I say, "When we, well, you know, when you're getting when you when you see a black car coming at you after the moment of a shootout, yeah, you don't know what that is. <laughs> no now, one's going to sit here and say, "Hey, man, let me wait and see who this is." Yeah, you don't know who that did, is. Did the off-duty cop see the whole thing? No, he didn't. He and just he heard tried it on it. He, he, he tried to say he did in the beginning, which he lied on so that. How did he oh. wind up there? He heard the gunshots, or he heard a call? Yeah, he like the nine one one. Truthfully, I mean, knowing a lot of, I, I know a lot of law enforcement. I'm gonna tell you like this: he was actually uh, at a Christmas party, and he did admit that he was drinking. He was oh, at a Christmas party. Okay. He, he, he was dr- he was drinking, and he was sitting in the parking lot, and then the yeah. shots went off. And he was so like, his, oh, damn. His yeah. testimony should be thrown out because he was drunk. Yeah, so I don't agree with people yeah. who are saying, and by the way, yeah. I want to thank everyone who's still hanging out with us. We appreciate it. You know, yeah. I, I know that people are, you know, this is the square table here. In case you just joined, this is the square table. Uh, Marcus, you probably don't understand that, but there's <laughs> there's another thing going on, and this is the square table. So thanks for everyone for hanging out here with us at the square table. 
<laughs> and uh, you know, we really appreciate oh, okay, it. Not the round table. Okay, we I'm need, slow. Yeah, we, yeah, it's not the round table, Walter. I'm, I'm slow. I'm slow. Table. Okay, I'm slow. Yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. So <laughs> give us those thumbs up and share this with family and friends so that we, you know, we can keep this going. Yeah, I think that I agree with you on running, man. You, you know, when your life is in danger, you save your life first. And yeah, you yeah, might yeah, have stayed right. there, and who knows what might have happened. That, that police officer might have rolled up and thought, mm -hmm. okay, you, you know, he could have done anything to you. You might have saved your life by leaving there, yeah. whether it was someone coming to attack you in that vehicle or what. So Yeah. And I'll tell you another thing. I, oh, no, oh, I was going to say, uh, oh, no, another piece of advice I give people. If you're black and you're and you're trying to get some help, don't go to Al Sharpton and them guys in a gun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> don't, amen, do not, brother. Amen. You're, you're, wrong, you're, call, so you're saying the NAACP didn't help you out? Nah, do not call the NAACP. Because you, you, you were on the wrong. You were on the you were on the wrong end of it. I was on you, the wrong. I, I didn't I didn't fit the Black Lives Matter agenda. I, yeah, you I, weren't I, the one that got shot. Yeah. No. Nah, yeah. I told. I put. I put up a post, man. I think Kevin. I think you've seen it too, Kevin. I put up a post about it. I was like, uh, pretty much, man. Like, if the camera's not around and you're not shot by a uh, officer, mm -hmm. so yeah. just oh, stay yeah, away right. from the the, the pimp and preachers. If, if if it's not if it's not fitting an agenda, and it's right. sad that we live in that kind of world, because had it been, a, and I hate to say it, but had it been a white guy you shot, potentially, right? But uh, or if you would have got shot, right, it would have right. definitely been all on your side. But it is it's one of them things to where, it, you know, that's what we call it's I, I say that you are selective backing. Right. If it doesn't fit my agenda, then I'm not going to use my big voice to help you out. Uh, and unfortunately, it's 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 weird because if you are in your minority in this situation, everybody's not just going to jump and help you because they want to be able to use that black card to take money. money. Yeah. yeah. Make, they make money in just right. It's not going to happen. It's no different than trying to get out and say, hey, um, you know, if you say that you train or you help everybody, they, they won't listen to you. But if you was to jump out and say, hey, you know what? After my ordeal, I'm only going to help black people become shooters. They will have your back in a heartbeat. If they can't play yeah. that card, it's not going to work. Yeah. Period. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and the message here, I think that they see overall is that this is a pro gun message, right? This is a good. That's guy not. That's gun. not their message. So. Yeah, this is not their message. So, um, how long did it take for you to start getting in the gun community, or do you feel? Do you still? Is it that you still don't feel you're in the gun community? Because um, I know you were mentioning that before, but it was breaking up. Uh, you know, what's your oh, relationship okay. right now with the gun community? Are people helping well, you I mean, out? What's going on? I mean, I've. I went to my first NRA convention in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been on Cam Edwards show. I've got a good relationship with him. I talked to Coleon. I was on his show. I mean, I've, I've, I've reached out to a lot of guys, met Maj Ture, mm -hmm. uh, met, Dan, uh, met Dana Lash. Uh, so I, I've, I've been talking to people in the gun community on the NRA side of things. But then as far as the grassroots organizations, like I told you, CJ, Open Carry Texas, a lot of those guys. I, I go when I go out of town and meet those guys, man. We, we, it, it's it's like a family now that I've I've didn't know I had because they had my back when uh, the stuff hit the fans, mm -hmm. and more so on the grassroots. Or you know, I didn't I didn't know. I'm gonna tell you, be honest with you, man. I didn't even have an NRA membership until recently, because okay. I didn't think that the, I thought that the NRA was uh, a bunch of white bigots that they didn't like black people, which was pretty mm -hmm. much the stereotype. And where did you get that from? From the movies? You got that from Ice Cube, didn't you? Triple X. Triple X. I mean, I got it. You know, it's, 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 I know, it's like, I know. You know. I know the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, Hollywood, like, Hollywood you know, is out there uh, participating in this fraud that's getting pulled on, over people's eyes. So, you know, they make people think. I remember with Lola when she first started getting into guns with me. I've always been into guns, to be honest with you. But when Lola started getting into it, she said, you know, I always thought that guns were just for the bad guys. And where does that come yeah. from? That comes yeah. from Hollywood. That comes that from comes the media. The yeah. But it yeah, it's, it's mostly Hollywood. Yeah. And and, and also um, those grassroots organizations, like everybody, when they talk about the NRA, they think like the NRA is the only gun organization. It's like no, it's plenty more gun organizations out yeah. there. And I remember I was with the I think I was I was with the uh, president of the U USCCA uh, Tim uh, Tim Summit his last name I think it is his last mm -hmm. name the USCCA. But uh, yeah, so everybody was like, well, what is the USCCA? Mm -hmm. No one knew what it was. You know what I mean? No one knew, never heard of it. Mm -hmm. um, 
they they was like, is that part of the NRA? Like, you know, this is this this is coming from feedback from people in Detroit, you know, who don't understand the culture. Mm-hmm. So you got to like everyone is under this blanket that the NRA is the only gun organization, and the other gun organizations, you know, they don't know anything about. So I tell people, it's more, if you don't want to be an NRA member, fine. I mean, but there's other organizations you yeah, can join. There are absolutely there are, and um, and nowadays, you know, we've got lots of different things going on. I would encourage you. Uh, you're on Facebook, right? Yep, Marcus Allen Weld is my Facebook name. Okay, cool. You know, um, at some point here, we should make sure that we're friends and following each other on social media and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you're following Kevin. I think I, I follow you on, on Instagram. I, I always know, I, I knew about you. I always noticed you about your Mohawk. I mean, oh. that's your <laughs> <laughs> it's called marketing. This is the marketing. Called, yeah. Mohawk, right? yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Just, just call him Yandu. I love that. <laughs> I, I, I always be like, yeah, the black guy with the Mohawk. That's what oh, I was always yeah. Okay, nice, <laughs> nice. Hey, I'll no, take it. That I was, was the whole point of the Mohawk. I was like, you know, um, I got to stand out here. You know what I'm saying? Cole has Cole got the hat. Kevin has the HK yeah. paraphernalia. I got the beautiful face, man. That's, that's yeah. what it is. I yeah, no, I got not. I got the Santa suit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you got, got yeah, suit. you got the <laughs> so have you put on a Santa suit since this whole thing? <laughs> Or are you now allergic oh, to Santa yeah, suits? That's, that's a good question. A bad, that's probably a bad thing. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm re- I just did a book trailer on them. I reenacted part of the scene. I had to put the suit on for the reenactment. Oh, you have a book tra- Where's the book trailer on? On my Facebook. I got two of them right now, but the new one's getting ready to be released on Friday. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to pitch this thing as a movie, actually. I got a couple guys I'm working with. Oh. So, so yeah, we're, okay. we're we're getting real creative with it, and we're getting ready to break the stereotype of a gun owner. I mean, right now, the 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 image of the of the of the uh, black gun owner, I believe, is is not a good one. Everybody wants to, like you said, Hollywood paints it as a villain, mm-hmm. paints us as uh, you know. I always bring up the movie Training Day with Denzel Washington when he was the cop in the uh, the, the Training Day movie. And it's like he gets yeah. the award for that movie is being a gangster with the gun and mm-hmm. instead of all the other good movies he did. It's like, why do you always got to promote the negative image? Why not promote the positive? So my my whole concept of, of what, I, what I'm coming from is, you know, challenging the stereotype itself as well as getting my story out there. And then I'm going to eventually be an NRA instructor. That's my, main, my uh, ultimate goal to train as many people as possible. Once I get my feedback wet, Mm-hmm. And uh, get with Kevin. There you go. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I would definitely uh, like you see that free training offer that Kevin gave you. Use that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when Kevin is like 105 years old, you knock on his door and you get some training. Uh, get your old ass out here. Let's go. <laughs> Let's I go. I might just shoot at you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. 105 years old. He might not recognize me. He's like, who? What? Oh. So let me ask you, man. You, I, I, and I was waiting on you to, to plug that in because I know we talked about it on the phone. Um, and be direct. And your situation is unique. Uh, and I think that you have a great story to tell. And I think even where you're trying to go is awesome. So Hank asked about your relationship with the gun community and how it's coming along. I'm going to ask you a more direct question. Yep. What immediately right now, besides exposure, because I know that's one thing to get your story out there, as far as helping you get back into the gun and training and things like that, what immediately do you need from the gun community? What what immediately right now? Material, tangible things. Mater- you need? Um. Well, uh, you know, I well, first of all, I need, to, well, need a gun. I, this may be <laughs> oh. I need my gun back. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I, no I, I was actually getting ready. I was actually getting ready to ask Springfield. I was going to ask ask. Uh, I think we talked about this too, Kevin. Did I was going to ask yeah. Springfield? Yeah, I was going to go straight to them. Like, look, man. So you know. Yeah. Yeah, you t- when you told me you were shooting, um, so just for guys' notes, and I see I'm always waiting for you to say stuff, then I'll I'll fill it in. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, so, okay. All right. Um when Marcus was, you know, when he got to telling me what kind of gun he used, um, uh, just so happens I'm really good buddies with one of the Springfield comp shooters. So uh-huh. we've already dropped the dime to see if Springfield will cut us a pro deal on getting you a new XDM forty. So we're just waiting on to hear word back. But the request has been put in. Yeah. And I, I okay, mean I was cool. I, I, that's cool. And then, um, you know, once I, I mean, of course, you're going to need, uh, you know, all type of training tools and stuff when I get off into, I would even say holsters. Um, I mean, anything that's, that, that I would need, because I'm going to do what I was going to do was a lot of different uh, 
a lot of people come to me asking what guns should they use for self-defense i mean mm -hmm. with the carry you know that's like the main question i get now is mm -hmm. about that after they get through the story of the aftermath like well what gun do you think i should carry well why not the one I carried? I mean, it saved my life. I didn't, I didn't have any problems with it. So that's it. Right. You know, that's, one, that's one of the things. But also, I think is this is this is huge. Make sure you get a comfortable holster. You got to have a comfortable holster, man, because like when you got to when you when your holster, if your holster is like something that, you know, it's not really doesn't really fit you. And you got this gun and you can't get to it when, as quick as possible, man. And that holster is, not, is holding you up, man. Sometimes that, that, that those seconds can cost you your life. Yeah. Well, so I, I tell I've been comfortable. Be comfortable. You know, don't yeah, get I something think, that's gonna make you uncomfortable. I think we can. Um, I think you know, between the gun community, I don't think that any little bitty thing you said is undoable. No. Uh, and uh, also, it would go yeah. a long way uh, for Springfield Armory. They owe us a few. Oh, oh yeah, it would definitely. It, 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 it would help for Springfield Armory to do something nice like this. So, it, so. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm going to follow up on that. I'm not going to give up, you know, until I get a flat out answer. But uh, either way, mm -hmm. um, um, it's, you know, as your legal situation is cool now, dude. If nothing else, there are plenty of legal ways to get great deals on guns. So we can make that happen. Um, and holster uh, gear, stuff like that, you know, between Hank knows a, a ton of people. Coleon knows a ton of people. I know you talked to Argo, Maj, myself. Look, man, I just be. You know, I know it's all about presence, but just be vocal about what you need, because if you're, you're yeah. trying to get out there and you're trying to help people and you're doing something positive, it's one thing. You got a lot of guys that just do this because they just want stuff, <laughs> want you know, just yeah. to hoard right, stuff. Right, right. Yeah. And then there are guys that are actually out there pushing the Second Amendment agenda and trying to get people educated in different ways. And with those guys, you know, you'll see the closer you get in, the more tight knit it gets. And people are more than willing to jump in and help out. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Marcus. Um, I agree with you, by the way, Kevin. Uh, Marcus, what's your status right now in terms of employment? Are you working, not working? I'm back working now, man. That's, okay. that's the blessing. I'm back working. I just had a job interview today. Matter of fact, it's crazy because I, I was uh, I had two. You know, I'm always I always work two jobs, but I don't I'm only working one now because I lost one. Couldn't get it back. Mm -hmm. Um a lot of a lot of employment sometimes they probably question mark me when they see me because if you Google me it's a ton of, <laughs> it's a lot of articles. Yeah, it's gonna be so, tough. Uh, okay, it's gonna be tough. But um, so financially, man, I'm just kind of like I, I realize for me to feed my family, I'm gonna have to hustle other way, selling books. Um, yeah, and I'm already fifty grand in a hole, so I gotta kind of like I gotta be creative. Yeah, gotta absolutely, creative. absolutely. And what we and anything we can do to help out with that. You know, um, like I said, you know, follow me on social media. We'll all try to do what we can to help promote the book, uh, promote the, uh, the the page. I know it's not a GoFundMe. It's a uh, hold on. I'll pull that page up again. It's uh, is it fr fundraiser? Yeah, fundraiser. And I put a uh, I put a link to it in the description for anyone who wants to uh, check that out. At the same time, man, you know, if you've got aspirations to do things here, we, you know, we definitely do whatever we can to help you out just because, you know, you're probably, you're probably in a very good position to, to help other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and therefore and, help yourself. Yeah. Well, and, I think, and, and, I think you're in a good position for, to be a spokesperson for these insurance companies. But true. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I you're the perfect you. example why you should have it, right? Yeah. You lived it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did, I did yeah. the, the, the NRA, I, there's an interview with me on the NRA for the carry guard. I did that at the convention. There was two, three of them. They did that. But uh, I think, I know I've been in contact with Dana. I know she's going through some stuff right now, so I haven't talked to her recently. But, yeah. Unfortunately, I heard Dana I mean, had to yeah. like move because she's got death yeah. threats and yeah, horrible things yeah, that know. people out there who say that they're liberal and all oh, those they're the people that under, the they're, the, they're the ones that under, they're understanding. Yeah. yeah they're the sometimes understanding. those yeah. are the worst people out there, man. But um, yeah. So it's well, if you, terrible if you know, to hear like, that about Dana. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I mean, the insurance companies definitely, I mean, if you know what? I'm sure everyone's gonna go to Shot Show, right? Everybody know yeah, Kevin. Yeah. He told me that he Kevin told me never ask him that again because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's a gift. I had to tell him. <laughs> he asked me. He's like, I mean, are you gonna go to Shot Show? I said, you don't ask a gun guy if he's going to Shot Show. <laughs> well, of course I'm going to Shot Show. I'm going just to play in Hank's Mohawk. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Oh boy, I uh -oh. have a boot <laughs> Shot Show. So we're yeah. Going. So are you going? Yeah, are well, you going to Shot Show? Well, I, I'm getting ready to start getting my money together now. I need to figure out how much it yeah. costs, but I'm gonna make sure I'm yeah. down there and get the time off. But
Well, Go I'll ahead. tell you something. You you make a good, you know, you you carry yourself and you're well spoken. You carry yourself well, you're well spoken. I think you would make a good spokesman yeah. for some people at Shot Chill. So I don't know what we can do to encourage that or help out with it, but you know. Do you have a I LinkedIn? Never a, uh yes, I do. I do. Okay. I do. All right. Follow me on LinkedIn also. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna mm -hmm. follow you on and um I, I didn't know Kevin. He he let me know with the shot show because I didn't like, keep in mind this would be my first shot show. And that, right. that was my first NRA convention. So I'm I'm you know every time I go when I'm going to these things I'm like you know I'm like a kid at a candy shop like wow this is this is, this is, this is, this is, this is well, look, amazing. Man, do, do this. I'll tell you what. Get, That's what I'm get telling you. Get to shot show and you don't have to worry about being lost. I mean you know a lot of people. I know you know a lot of people, but get the shot. Now I'm gonna put you like right here and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go around that thing. Yeah, yeah, we're going. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm actually hyped, man. I mean, Vegas, man. Like, yeah, this is. <laughs> no, no, you gotta wear some comfortable shoes. Remember, Shot Show. Yeah. I was telling you, if Shot Show is different than. Yeah. You, know, you gotta walk yeah, your yeah, ass yeah. off. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, Shot yeah, is yeah. a bunch of industry guys, and PA is a little different, but. I could yeah. tell you right yeah. now, like you said, your dad was a Marine, right? Yeah. Yeah. So right. I have a friend that's a Marine that's in the gun industry. Um, really, really, really good guy, William Bethards. He actually works for the FBI, the training academy. And um, at last shot show, I literally saw William walking in the line because it's like just cattle. That's how people are. It's just yeah. cattle walking from one place to another. And mm -hmm. I saw him at the end of the day walking in the line and sleeping and walking at the same time. <laughs> and he was asleep right. on his feet walking. I was like. You know, this is something I asked him about it later. He was like, "Yeah, I learned that in the Marines." <laughs> what the wow. Hell? <laughs> well, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm pumped off adrenaline, man. Like, I, if you're ever on a house arrest or on tether for over a year, the moment oh. you're able to get out of house, trust <laughs> me, any, any, any time you get out of house, you're gonna take it. And when you're talking about Vegas, somewhere I haven't been in years because I used to go to Vegas once a year, but uh, that was when I was rolling in a little bit of money and I was, I worked two jobs and didn't have this happen to me. But now I've been kind of like. If I can go to Ohio, that'd be cool, and that's like an hour away from Michigan. So, <laughs> to, so, so, it's, so, so when I when I go out to the when I went to Atlanta to the uh, NRA convention, I'm in a vacation. I was like, that was like the first that was the first time I left out of town since the case. Yeah. So I was like, uh, well, I'm sorry, not the second time. So I was I was like, man, I'm out of town. You know, I'm I'm, I'm in Atlanta. I, I'm the case is over. I got people who actually give a damn about me. Because everybody else, and the, <laughs> these these other guys I was down there in Detroit with, uh, these activists, they didn't really give a damn and when the cameras cut off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so it was like, a, it was just like, man, it was people, they had the open arms, man. They were like, you know, I'm sorry you went through that. And uh, it, it, felt, it felt good to actually have some people care. Okay, cool. Yeah, listen, if you uh, embrace the gun community, quote unquote, for what it is, it's, it's a weird community, but it, it is a community <laughs> of, of some sorts. And if you, you know, I think if you reach out, people will reach out to you, obviously not everyone. And it's a process, it takes time, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I think that you present yourself well, as I said already, and uh, you're you're obviously a good guy, you know, and you live this, man. It's very, you know, a lot of us are talking stuff out here and we haven't lived it yet. So I hope you not. have obviously yeah. lived it. Yeah. And I, I and hope I hope not. to never live I hope it. Not. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I just always yeah. want to be this crazy dude with a mohawk, you know, shooting on the on the hacienda, having fun, balling out. I never want to have to tell your story, but you lived it already. Thankfully, you're still here. I'm sure your family is happy for that, you know, and if you really do believe in this, man, keep embracing it and you will find that all that you've lost will come back to you and even more, especially when you help other people. You know, that's a big responsibility for us, um, you know, help other people and, and that will come back. Kevin, I, I see Kevin showing guns. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, we're going to do some gun porn here before make we go. me go back to the safe. Yeah, I, want, I wanted to, you know, because I know uh, Marcus is uh, just really getting into the gun side of things. So. Uh, let's just, I don't know, let's show them some guns. So, well, I, I guess I'll start with a little handgun since nobody believes I have anything but HKs. So, this, uh -huh. um, this is a Glock 32 compensated. I actually love this gun. So, it's a 357 SIG. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's nice. With the mm -hmm. deported and got yeah. the little... Yeah. One thing I could tell you, like, Kevin, I would be, I would probably drop out of my chair if Kevin had a high point. He's got nice guns. High point? Uh, you see a high, high point? point? Yeah. Wait, uh, wait a minute. Don't, don't, don't even go there. Uh oh, uh -oh Walter's showing oh, the high points. Uh, you, do you have a high you know, point hat, Walter? 
You need no, to get sir, that from Chuck. Man, no I challenge point. everyone to get high point hat to Chuck. Probably doesn't exist. That, what, it, what do you What do you think about uh, What do you think about high points, there, Marcus? You can man, say anything I'm you a, want. I won't be a No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm gonna give it to you from the uh, another Detroit perspective. Uh, the, uh -oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, when I was in, uh, this is about five years ago, I was in Southwest Detroit and this guy, he was like, uh, he was, he was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he was. I don't know if he was, uh, he was Mexican, I believe. And he, he couldn't speak much English, but he was trying to sell me something. I'm walking like, what is it? He pulls out a high point and tries to sell it to me on the street. <laughs> yeah. No, it was on the street. Yeah. I mean, yeah I'm sure like, that's what? happened many times. <laughs> and I'm like, I said, dude, this dude just pulled out a gun. And then my, you know, so I have my best friend with me. He's a gun expert. He know, he tells me, he said, Oh man, at least he could have sold you something better than a high point. <laughs> so that's like the joke I always we always say. I was like, man, this dude pulled a high point out. He was like, man, what is, what is this? And he was like, man, he wanted three hundred bucks for it, and he was like, oh, uh, oh no, he was trying to, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, he was trying to get a, a high point on the street, yeah. man. And it, not, this thing was so big. It's, that was the first time I ever seen a high point. Yeah, not only was that highly illegal, but that's it's also another yeah. crime because he was trying to jack you. He was saying, Jack, yeah. yeah. He, I mean, he didn't speak any yeah. English. My, my high point, I English. paid less than 100 bucks for my high point. Yeah. I got 100 in that yeah, one. Yeah, he, yeah, so there you go. A high point, you know, yeah, I mean, those, brand new, a high point is like a buck, what, 50? Yeah. So, okay, so I, I, yeah, depends we, on the, I... Depends on the neighborhood. Yeah, we distracted <laughs> Kevin without talk of high points, so let's give Kevin... All right, Kevin, back to the... Go ahead, guy. Kevin. Yeah. Go on. Then uh, when, you, when we decide to get you into, you know, the, the long gun type of things... Now, oh, this isn't boy. as long as one Hank has. Ooh. He pulled it. Dang yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, uh, yours is never going to be as long as mine, my friend. Just saying. <laughs> Just, okay, you, you queued that one up. I couldn't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is that a trigicon on there? Yeah, this is this isn't as you know what I'm I'm really setting myself up. I, I just have to say yeah, it. Like, use your words carefully. This isn't as big as the trigicon you brought out. Uh, oh, I was gonna ask you that. I was but, gonna ask you that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know this, I know you were trying to set me up. <laughs> All right. This is a common trigicon, which is still oh. expensive as crap, but yeah, this is my I haven't brought this one out in a while. This is the Marcus, this is that uh three hundred blackout. Let's see, I have a warthog. That's a warthog, yeah. That's to look at the warthog. I like your, I like the, yeah, nice color choices here too. Yeah. And then because yeah. it's finicky, we got the fail zero boat in that thing, so we got a nice. Oh, with the fail zero on top of that. And what's that handguard? Uh, the handguard is this is uh the entire upper, uh, is advanced armament corp. So it's ACC three hundred blackout. Is their mm -hmm. barrel? Is their rail? It's everything. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to play games, any kind of games with. The 300 blackout because I know it can be a little finicky, mm -hmm. so I just went with their complete upper. Okay, Forest Fire says it's not the size of the barrel, but the rate of the twist. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh -oh. is a this is a this is a one by seven to stabilize that round. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's just, that's uh, the rate of twist. Okay, my rate of twist is also better than yours. I, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Um, Staying out of it. And it's already. Um, I already got the oh. uh, break on here to be threaded for their suppressor. So I guess I need to get an AAC suppressor because the thread's right on this guy. Yeah. In the and, spirit of all that stuff, we'll just bring this oh guy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> and you can just uh, bringing out his his uh, bullet dildo. Twenty. It's not, It's twenty five millimeter dummy round, man. Is it plastic? It's, yeah, it's plastic. It's, it's a good. bullet dildo. Hold oh. it up in the screen for a second. Let Marcus take a look at this. Marcus, just back up a little bit. What does this look like to you? In this, what, what, do you see this, Marcus? What is that? Uh, it looks like it does like it looks like a bullet deal, though. It does. Like, yeah, there you go. Marcus says Marcus has spoken. <laughs> you won't, you won't ever get a job nowhere now. So. <laughs> um, don't ever let them look at this hangout. <laughs> Or hopefully they just look at the beginning. Everything was good in the beginning. Okay, so that's that's what you got there, Kevin. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, this is this is one of my this is one of my little babies. I'm supposed to be carrying this down to um, NRA next year and doing some hog hunting before. Yeah. So let me um, because we got Marcus here. Let's show Marcus some dumb porn. Marcus, you weren't here to see this before. Check out this Glock. Wow. I don't know if you like Glocks. Oh yeah. No, I love Glock actually. Okay, so now this is a um, Glock 17 G 17 C, and uh, obviously this is SBR. It's also, if you look at the back of it right there, check that out right there. That switch, yeah. that's the fun switch, my friend. That allows this to go full auto. Wow. So I'm just saying, you know, you 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 come to Florida 
we will put on a show. So, and, and, so, and where are you at in Florida? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm in Gainesville, just outside of Gainesville. So, you know, this this is Big Daddy Guns. The guys who are sponsoring the show right there, these guys, yeah, Big Daddy yeah. Guns, they've got cool guns like this. So that is full auto. So I know Kevin had like a nice little Glock, but, you know. We got to hook Kevin, that 50 Kevin, round bag. Your, your, your Glock don't have that switch on it. Does oh, it? Got the fun My switch. Glock don't have that switch. Yeah, I know. I noticed you're like sitting back in the chair and you have a look of disgust. For everyone who's listening to this on the, on the iTunes, Kevin right now has a, a look of deep disgust. <laughs> That's all right. Face. That's all right. Oh, Kevin. Um, it's about it's it's about to be even worse. Check this out. Uh oh. You know, like this. Check this out. Angstad Arms, right here, Kevin. I see your little PCC there. Yeah. Angstad Arms. Show them the switch. Yeah. It's nice. Angstad Arms. It's an SBR. Check it out. You know, it's got, it's got the actual stock on there, Marcus. SBR. But look, this is the fun part of this. Do you see the switch of this? Safe. See, yeah. That's safe. Fire. That's fire. Then it and goes back. It goes back, Kevin. I know it goes, it goes back. It goes Dang. all the way back. I know. So auto on this bad boy uses the Glock magazine. So second and a half, it's gone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No way. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ever. Kevin, I'm not bringing any more guns on. Kevin. Um. And then, as you said before, as you alluded to this, Marcus. I don't know if you saw this, but check this out. Oh, that's a big one. Boom! I don't even have room here wow. in the studio to show this. So this is a how many, how many guns? Are, how uh, many guns you think you got? How many guns you think you got all together? This of uh, who? Me personally? Uh, oh, 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 oh. A thousand. A thousand. Oh, you a thousand. don't have a thousand guns. <laughs> I, have a, I do have a thousand. How do you know? <laughs> Well, you don't know how many guns. This is not. These aren't my guns that I'm showing right now, Marcus. Uh, full okay. disclosure. This is the SX1 MTR rifle. It's from uh, Ritter and Stark. So just to show, but this is a this is a uh, Tony bolt Stark? action. Uh, I, I don't know. It could be bolt action. New, this is like a, a relatively new company, I think. That yeah, I've never heard of before. Actually. And it's modular. Yeah. So very nice gun. This is this is about uh, this retails for like around six grand. Wow. So it uses 308 magazines. Um, but these aren't my guns. These belong to Big Daddy Guns. But, you know, just trust me, Marcus. I got about a thousand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that's a good question. What would you <laughs> say the average? How many guns does the average gun guy have? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Would, yeah. Go ahead, Walter. You I, take this one first. Uh, uh, wait, how many the average gun the person? Average has? gun guy. The average, the average gun. The average gun person. How many? Yeah, I, would, I would probably say 15 to 20. 15 to 20. Okay. Um, Marcus, how many guns do you think the average gun guy would have? I was going to say about 10 to 10. 10 to 15. Okay. Marcus says 10 to 15. What do you say, Kevin? I'm I'm with that. I'm, I like that anywhere between ten and twenty range. Oh, I, yeah. I think fifteen thousand. I'm gonna say fifteen thousand. <laughs> yeah, fifteen thousand guns. <laughs> you, can, you you guys know my formula, right? Like anytime someone asks me how many guns I have, I think more. How many? Like what is a number that's gonna shock that person? <laughs> a thousand. And that's what I tell them. <laughs> so you know, I figured. Uh oh. My, my my daughter wanted to say hello. I'm sorry. And the, oh, and the she, puppy wanted to say hello. Okay. Oh, the puppy. She's, she's hiding. She's hiding. Oh, <laughs> <Is> it, <laughs> good back night. In bad connection. But, hey, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, uh, obviously, yeah. as all daughters, she does not cooperate. <laughs> yeah. And you can always. So, so you put the camera on it, like, get away. Yeah. Get away. <laughs> yeah. What and were you saying, Kevin? And then we're going to uh, we're going to get Marcus shooting these. I'm going to get him on video shooting one of these guns with that light. Big HK. shout out to my guys over at Enforce. Steve, yes. appreciate shout you out to Enforce. Yeah, I saw you. Uh, I saw Enforce was at your event, Kevin. I saw that on your Instagram. Yes, Enforce, good people, man. Go out and support them. I like Enforce. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you this. Segway. They're good people, not because you know they 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 make sure we got stuff to show, but all those companies, man, like without. No product involved. We're just like, we'll send you whatever. We don't need any payback. We don't need any social media. Just help people out. And that was Okay, cool. Yeah, that's cool. I have one Enforce light that I use when I was training with. Um, with Every yeah, yeah, I, I told so, them that. Yeah. So um, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but, but the, the Enforce light is great. But look what it's attached to. Uh, HK. Uh, I can't tell what that is. What is it? Is it a high point? 
Well, no, 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 it's no. Like a it's a, oh, it's, it's a point of evolution. It's a Jimenez. <laughs> is, is that a Jimenez <laughs> that you have right there? Jimenez, I think. No. <laughs> oh, ouch. He's tough, man. Ouch. <laughs> okay, exhale. Our friend exhale, who, by the way, um, uh, I think it was exhale. I think he was in the hospital. Exhale says, uh, "Where did you get the red? The red? What? The light? Yeah. Custom yeah. done." The light was custom done by my guys at Midwest Cerakote. Look up, look them up. Midwest Cerakote on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, John and Adam. Very cool, very cool. And Vanessa Kitty wants to know the uh, name of the gun. That is a Ritter and Stark. Hold on a second. I will. It's a Ritter and Stark S as in Sam, X as in X-ray. So SX1 MTR, which I think stands for like what is it modular tactical rifle or something like that but i will and, and here's the uh here's the thing gun, this big massive case that this gun came in let's see if i could turn it over this way there you go ritter and stark i hope i get some respect from those ritter and stark dudes have to hold. <laughs> this freaking case weighs like 40 50 pounds <laughs> ridiculous so but yeah okay nice case i could open up a case yeah. Uh oh. Do you do you are you pulling out guns now? I could. Are we okay. gonna keep going here? Or is, yeah. Okay. Already... Let's show one more thing, Walter. One more thing. Go ahead. Show us the one more thing before we go. Yeah. Now. Let me. Any choice. You want a belt fed, or do you want? Um. Like Kevin said what? earlier, that's not a question. If you have belt fed, <laughs> show us belt fed. <laughs> What's wrong? Right. <laughs> No, do I, I've we, seen too many. Want belt fed. I, let me think about that. <laughs> Marcus, are you taking your clothes off, dude? What's, what the hell? Man, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Marcus is like, I'm going to make some money. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> hey, hey, no, hey, look, I, I, I was getting ready for I, I was getting ready for bed. I'm grabbing different, uh, out, uh, grabbing my pajamas. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Yeah. Okay. Hey, you... I, hey, Kevin, why you put me on blast like that, man? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I just knew I saw a tank top and some skin. I'm like, what kind of show is this now? I don't know. It's, getting, it's getting hot in her. <laughs> okay. Wait, uh, no, I... Oh dear. <laughs> well, no, that's cool. cool. When I took my Santa suit off. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, Joe Carpenter <laughs> says, "Where's the Santa suit? Did you uh, <laughs> did you frame that Santa suit? No, no actually, it's in custody." That's, it, no, 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 that's a violation. There's that's no way in hell that could be in you know, custody. You know, it's one thing to take your gun, but it's another thing to take your gun. Yeah, what's up with that? That doesn't mean, no. That's, it was evident. The, they had it in a plastic bag when they brought it into court. <laughs> but you still didn't get that back? Back. <laughs> oh, that's that's not even right. That's not right. That's, okay, it's, yeah. it's, it's not right at all. Man. Yeah, you need to get. You know what? Uh, you should put. You should put that on your um on your GoFundMe page, or I think it's called fundraiser. You should put that on there, man. You should say like, you know, just help me get my my Santa suit back, man. Yeah. Right. Right. You know. <laughs> I mean. Okay. All right. So Walter's pulling out. While Walter's pulling out his belt fed. You know. Mike Bryant says Christmas is canceled. Who do you, here's a good question since we're still on air. Marcus, you're working on a movie. In your mind, who would be the perfect actor to play you in the movie? Oh, that's a good if one. I had a, that's a good one. Uh, I know I know an actor slash model as a gun guy, Tyson Bedford as a gun guy. I will pick him as being a gun guy, but it, he doesn't look like me. Uh, uh, yeah, but Tyson but, Beckford is more like when they make the Hank Strange movie, you know. Yeah. Then they can I, go I, with, I, with a Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will, the only guy I can think of in the industry, people, I, I, people say Nick Cannon and uh. <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> Nick Cannon. <laughs> people say no, no. So, what's the guy who played? No, what's no, the guy who played? Nick in, Cannon will come in your movie with a turban on his head. That's not gonna work. Yeah. That's what about what's the guy who played? Got a wrapped up thing on his head now, huh? What's the guy who played in the movie? The, the movie, uh, God, I can't think of his name. The boxing movie. Um, oh, you're talking about John Michael B. Jordan? Yes. Uh, Michael uh, Jordan. No, no, it, it is Michael B. No. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan. Michael, yeah, yeah, because he's in Black Panther. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael B. Okay, yeah, that's not that bad. In, uh, he, played, you're talking about he played in the, the new Apollo. He played the, like Apollo's son. Yeah. Wait, um, wait. What's the boxing movie? What's the name of the boxing movie? Creed? Are you talking about Creed? Yeah. Creed, Creed, yeah, Creed. Yeah, Michael B. Michael B. Jordan or something. Yeah, that, that that that's who's gonna play me. That's that, that we're gonna get him. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that's you know that makes sense. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan. He's a good actor. Mm-hmm. He's a good actor. We we got like got similar. Some people say we got similar features. So that, that. Oh man. Hey, you just got a cool name for your movie. Uh, give a shout out to Vanessa Kitty. Said Bad Santa Four: The Return of the Suit. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's funny. Okay. That's I think funny. that's funny. We got We gotta like hook Vanessa Kitty up with some swag for that, Walter. Seriously. Okay. That's a good one. I'm going to send her a boot for that one. Yeah. <laughs> that <was> Vanessa <laughs> Giddy. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could uh, figure out how to get on and see all the comments on my phone. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's tough to do it from the phone. Okay, Walter, what you got? What's okay. this gun? Show us this gun here. Let's see also, this. This one also has that switch you were bragging about. Uh-huh. Does it go all the way back? What? It goes all the way back, boy. Oh, that's a Kentucky gun right there. I can tell. This is the uh, formerly for, formerly Aries Defense Strike. Okay, um, that's the upper, but your lower isn't that a double star lower? Uh, yeah, it's a double star, but it's been uh, mochin for the third position. So. Oh, oh, okay. So this okay, is very cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah, double star was my first AR that I ever bought. Double yeah, star. These, I don't even have it anymore, but it, that's a Kentucky company. And then so you have the Aries Defense, which is what like flight light now. It's called fight light, like yeah, fight light. Yeah. Um, this story, may, may I tell the story behind this thing? Yes. I ordered this thing and had to wait nine years for it to be delivered. Damn. Wow. Nine Whoa. years. Nine yeah. years. That, nine years. That had to be painful. <laughs> well, I forgot about it. You have a hell of a lot of patience for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it happens I, sometimes. I, when I ordered this, I was like, I had to really scrape up all the money for the deposit and everything. And then, you know, then it, then I, then I was balling in nine years. So, um. <laughs> Oh, so I see. So when you weren't, when you were in a non-balling status, you put up the money, and by the time it came through, you actually had moved up to balling status. I, I went, yeah. Well, where well, I did, it wasn't okay. A thousand dollar deposit on that upper when I ordered it, right? Wow, so that was a lot of money. I had to yeah, get. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting nine years. Well, to get most a lot of people did on my thousand dollars. They would have heard from me. Yeah, a lot of people got their money back, but I decided I wanted the upper, so I hung out. Oh. So okay. Now he sells them for four thousand plus. So, hmm. yeah, I guess. I yeah, very cool. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do we, some. Uh, how you guys feel about Benelli? The the uh, like different shotguns. Benelli, the Benelli shotguns. Oh, those are solid, man. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Benelli, you can yeah. do a Benelli M two or M four. You're in. Yeah, the M four. Yeah, I had, I, had, I had an M four. I sold that one too. Oh, you had an M four. Oh yeah. yeah. That was like a tough. Like Benelli sixteen hundred dollars. Okay, so. You know, it was a used one. I didn't. I didn't have. It wasn't brand new. It was used, but okay, it was still nice. Okay. No, they're uh, they're cool. No, no, Benelli's cool. That's a cool company. All right. So you know what? Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. We've been going uh, over two hours now. So I want to. You know, let's wrap it up. Uh, let's start with Walter. What do you want to tell the folks out there? Uh, well, we the typical Facebook, Instagram, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, what else? Stenparts.com is my other. My other website, safetyharborfirearms.com. Check it out. Um, uh, what else? Um, maybe going to go shoot this weekend, make some video, I think. We're going to test okay. fire that little 12-inch 50. Okay. What, okay. Kind of, what it'll do in the four, feet per second on the chronograph, you know? And who knows? I got some new guns. that I got to test fire this PSA gun. Oh, okay. Yeah, everybody's been asking me about it, so I got to okay. see if it works or not, so. Okay, so we might be seeing some video coming out from Walter. Okay, make sure you guys follow Walter and Safety Harbor Firearms. Uh, Marcus, make sure you follow him and get in touch with him. Uh, when we go off air here, we're all still going to stay here, so that I'll make sure you guys exchange stuff. But uh, definitely follow. We'll, you know, we'll follow what's going on with you and help you out social media wise and whatever whatever else we can do. Okay, Kevin, take it away, man. What you got going on, brother? All right, man. Follow follow me on all the social media stuff. You know, NOC Firearms Training on Facebook. Kevin Dixie on Facebook. Instagram at NOC Firearms Training. Hank, what's my Patreon? What's that? Patreon is slash NOC Firearms. firearms. There you Patreon go. Patreon slash NOC Firearms. Um, and just keep up the website, which I never forget. To, I always forget to plug the website. No other choice. All spelled out. One word. Dot net. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of blogs coming up. We're gonna get into some writing, some real reviews. Uh, a little bit of a um, Second Amendment stance and stuff on there. So keep up, uh, be on the lookout for uh, videos coming from all kind of people, including present company. You know, um, 
So we're gonna, gonna have some fun, man. Getting ready for the holiday season, do some fun stuff. Maybe you can get um Marcus back in the Santa suit, do some fun shooting. You never know. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, by the way, Vanessa Kitty, who came up with that really cool comment, said uh, should be in Florida in January before I begin at UMass. So there you go. Okay, so we'll see. You know, hit us up if you are in Florida. That'd be cool. All right, Marcus, uh, what do you want to plug out there, man? Tell people how they can help you out, all the different things you have going on. Yeah, well, I got, um, of course, Amazon. You can find my book on Amazon, The Santa Claus Shooter, Guilty and Proven Innocent. This is actually another limited edition cover, too, I got coming out that uh, I got limited, limited stock in right here. I got about 50 of them. So you'll see it on my Amazon profile, but my website, MarcusWeldon.com, the limited edition does have pictures in it from the articles, the news, uh, uh, New York Times, all that different stuff, all those pictures. And also my social media, Marcus Allen Weldon. My Twitter is Marcus the Gun Guy. That's my Twitter account. Marcus the Gun Guy? Mark Hold on, I'm going to search Marcus it right now. Guy. That's cool. And, and Marcus Allen Weldon is my all my other Facebook and Instagram. Marcus, the gun guy. Now I have to ask this question, Marcus. Um, I'm Marcus, following you on Twitter. Uh -huh. Marcus, Marcus Allen. Um, somebody a football fan, or was that a family name? My father was. Okay. He was. He was the. He was the. Uh, he was. A, he was the football guy. He liked uh, Marcus Allen. But yeah, I just had to. And add. then there's another Marcus Weldon out here that's uh, some rich guy. So every time you Google Marcus Weldon, he comes up. Yeah. So, folks, if you're googling it, you're looking for the uh, for the black Marcus Weldon. There's a. If you put Santa, yeah. I mean, Santa. Yeah, yeah. That's the, I'm the only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I found it when I searched Marcus Allen Weldon. So there you go. Oh, speak. You know, speaking of owning that that Santa shooter thing, you you should own that actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's Absolutely, man. Talking. Get patches made, make up T-shirts and all that. We'll talk about that. Definitely follow me on social media. Yeah, trademark, trademark. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And that's why, uh, that's why I called the book The Santa Shooter, because that's what the New York Times called it. Yeah, yeah, they labeled you, you know, they labeled you that. You got to try to turn it around and, and you know, have off. it work for your advantage. Um, so uh, you're on Instagram as Marcus Weldon? Uh, Alan Weldon. Marcus Alan Weldon. Okay, I see it. Okay, following you on Instagram. Okay, cool, man. Thanks a lot. I want to thank you for coming in, Marcus. We really appreciate thank you telling you. us your story. I know it wasn't easy. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, y'all y'all made y'all made it a lot easier than normal. I mean, it was, it was, you know, we had some fun with it. So, it cool. yeah. Cool. All right. And I want to thank Kevin for uh bringing you to our attention, Kevin. Thanks uh, for that, yeah. man. Oh, you're welcome, man. No, anytime. Mm. Yeah. Every now and then. What are you doing? What are you doing? You you are sexually assaulting. You are pulling a Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> yeah, Weinstein in your HK there, huh? Yeah, on that HK. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's I don't I'm gonna have to get into HKs, man. He's got me into No, don't do it. Don't do yes, it. Yes, I... Don't do it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. have... Yeah. Look at, Look at that, Hank. Stop hating. But no, man, it was. Um, I knew this was going to be a great, um, a great ease, uh, easy platform for Marcus to come on. Right. Over. Yeah, so. and and for folks out there, I know Babyface sent me a message to before I go. He said to remind people that there's like the whole Richard Spencer thing is going down in Gainesville. For folks who don't know, Richard Spencer is that like white supremacist dude. Yeah. I guess he's visiting uh, Gainesville tomorrow, so there might be a little bit of shutdown going on here. I really hope that nothing will happen. We don't. Want, I want to give any more light. To dudes yeah. like that you know what i'm saying i know I, I believe in freedom of speech all that stuff he definitely has the right to express himself we also have the right to not like his ass <laughs> to not, um, not, not not share it yeah yeah but um so but it is a thing that's happening that's the reason why i'm speaking about it so tomorrow we are going to be here and we'll let you guys know what's going on in gainesville hopefully like i said i really like gainesville it's a town that's been very open to me so i hope nothing really goes down here you know, lots of good folks out here in Gainesville. So hopefully it doesn't, you know, it doesn't become a thing and it's all good. So um, I don't know if anyone else wanted to add anything before I finish here. Okay. Everyone's showing That's guns. Right. Hopefully I see everybody in shot show. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, man. Not to, not to, not to, um, to, to hate on Hank's uh, sponsor because he has a good one, but um, I'm going to okay, start. And we uh, accidentally couldn't hear anything. Kevin, uh, that whatever Kevin was uh, saying, we couldn't hear. We could not hear Kevin. 
We're gonna get happen. Oh, boop. Kevin, uh, got, Kevin got muted somehow. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, big shouts out to um, uh, my buddies over at Breakthrough Clean. They uh, they actually are sending me a bunch of stuff to give out for free for people as I'm getting them into guns. So they'll have uh, they're gonna they sent a bunch of stuff to you know hook people up. Uh, big shouts out to Proper. Uh, proper you know, say they help out with good clothing so if you guys are looking for great deals on clothing please go to proper.com it's like a third of the price of the guys that uh, other, other tactical companies that provide clothing so do yourself a favor go look at them proper.com i am going to exclusively to patreon and to the who move my freedom i'm going to bring a proper discount code before we share it with everybody else so you guys can even save more money on it um awesome. So be sure to uh, go out and get you an Enforce APL or WMLX. Uh, you can look up Enforce and Enforce.com and get some guns, buy some things. Go out and start supporting your gun community because the community as a whole, and manufacturers too, they all need some help right now. It's kind of a hard time, man. So yeah. get out there and help out. Right. And by the way, anyone who supports Kevin is a friend of ours. Kevin's a cool dude. So we appreciate all the companies out there that are supporting him. He's a good guy. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll let him talk about different things here from time to time. Just not too much HK stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. HK stuff. Yeah, yeah. We might have to use the we might have to use the mute button. Okay, I want to thank everyone that's hung out with us here on the chat. I really appreciate it. We got lots of good comments, lots of folks hanging out with us. That was great, awesome. I want to thank everyone who are Patreons to us on Patreon. It's Patreon slash Hank Strange. There, I said it like three times in three seconds. I want to thank those people. Also, all the people that sponsor the channel. That would be. Ran CLP. Ran. You know, there you go. We love the Ran CLP. We we fully tested it. It's more awesome than anything that people would use on HK. Nano infused, by so, the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing Kevin. All right. So uh, Ran CLP. Uh, Ran CLP. Uh, <laughs> Andrew's custom leather. Uh, of course, Safety Harbor Firearms, where this guy's from right there, Walter Keller. <laughs> you know, and of course, we want to thank the Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy. Yeah, that's, you know, I mean, Big Daddy Guns, that's how we get the big guns. We're all the big guns. There you go. That's how we get the big guns from Big Daddy Guns. Thanks a lot, guys. We really appreciate it, and uh, peace out. Peace. We appreciate peace. you. Peace. peace.